Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere. Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skylight Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. (laughs) How's it going, baby? And thank you for tuning in with me to another edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. This is episode number 261 for all the folks that are keeping track of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And before I get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please bookmark the official website of the True Capitalist Radio Show. It is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And, folks, you got all kinds of little buttons right next to the player, right next to you right there, right in front of you. Go ahead and use and abuse those buttons. All right, you got Facebook like buttons and retweet this buttons and social media buttons. All right, use and abuse those buttons and spread it around like wildfire that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, all right? We are live right now, folks, and of course, if we aren't live, it's because you're listening to us via podcast, and I'd like to thank you all for listening in as well. Uh, Once again, I am on Twitter, folks, so if you want to hear the latest, uh, you want to hear any random uh, tweet nonsense, go ahead. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. Uh, All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost is the official Twitter account of yours truly, all right? Now, uh, there's a lot of news to get into, folks. Uh, I I mean, there's just a whole bunch of stuff. But right off the damn hot wire, or the news wire, I should say, because hot wire, what is it, a travel site or something? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Loretta Lynch is coming out in response, folks, to the North Carolina, the whole state of North Carolina, uh, suing the Department of Justice in retaliation to what it's doing uh, in meddling into its state affairs in its passing of this day of bathroom law. Now, I know I I didn't want to lead in with this, folks. I mean, this is just trending right now on Twitter, for Christ's sake. You got Loretta Lynch out here, all right, you know, saying, you know, uh, uh, you can't be doing that. Uh, you're doing. You're, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing, folks. This literally just came off the hot wire right now. The, the news wire, excuse me. Anyway, she she basically rebutted whatever the damn lawsuit was put forth by the state of North Carolina as it relates to this bathroom issue. And if you've been living under a rock, all right, the damn uh, state of North Carolina passed a law stating that you can only use a public bathroom in relation to your gender, all right. And then, of course, everybody came up in arms for Christ's sake. Everybody used this on the left as a ploy to try to make North Carolina seem like a bunch of, you know, ridiculous bigots or something. But, you know, the bottom line is, folks, they just don't want, you know, I don't want to go through this whole thing again. You get it. If you look like a woman, if you're a genuine transgender, if you're a genuine tranny, trans testicle, if if you're a genuine one of those that looks like a woman, you live as a woman 24 hours a day, you can barely tell if you're not a woman or are a woman. 
well, then by God, no one's going to complain if you go into the bathroom, really have to do it, and just go and do your business and get out, all right? I mean, there's a lot of people that already are starting to use this as an opportunity to just kind of go in to a uh, random bathroom, for Christ's sake, and claim that, oh, well, you're not understanding. I feel like a girl today. I feel like a girl today, so I'm going to go in. I'm going to use this public bathroom. I mean, it's just, it's just stupid, disgusting, red herring, pathetic issue. And now you got Loretta Lynch, now the Justice Department top cop over here, talking this nonsense. It's a, it's pathetic. It's utterly pathetic. But you know what I'm going to do, folks? Because I don't want to spend too much time on this issue, okay? Uh, here at the end of the show, when we get start getting time for radio graffiti around that time, I am going to call uh, some stores that have been favorable, and I believe it has been Target that has been favorable to this uh, transgender cross-dresser uh, transvestite issue. Now, once again, I have alluded to the fact that if you're a trans testicle, transgender, tranny, transsexual, somebody who lives as a woman 24 hours a day, I mean, and that are genuinely making the, quote, transition into becoming a whole full-fledged female, and, and that doesn't mean you have to have the surgery or not, but just you're living and sounding and looking as a woman, no one's going to question if you have uh, in a, a nature call and you got to go to a damn public bathroom and you, you go into a woman's bathroom, nobody's going nobody's to complain about that, all right? But I'm telling you, folks, this is for these cross-dressers and these damn transvestites, and I hate to keep reiterating these sick definitions, folks, but let me tell you, you have to. You have to know these definitions. You can't be just ignorant of this trash. I'm, I'm not joking, all right? The difference between a transgendered and a transsexual is the fact that those people are genuinely trying to transition their whole lives or persona based on being a woman. Cross-dressers, believe it or not, these are males that, you know, put on clown makeup and, you know, they go out and, you know, lip sync at gay clubs and, you know, that, that sort of thing, okay? Those are, those are not people that are trying to genuinely live like women 24 hours a day, okay? Moreover... All right, moreover, you've got uh, transvestites. Transvestites are literally just idiots that are just throwing on a dress with, you know, unshaven, you know, beards and, uh, you know, unshaven legs, you know, with their disgusting man bodies, just dressing up as women for sexual gratification. Now, unfortunately, I have to continue to reiterate these definitions because this is the new modern-day goddamn liberal America. You understand? This is the modern-day liberal America, for Christ's sake. But it, 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 towards the end of the show, folks, like, I'm going to give it an hour-and-a-half part, you know, when we're an hour-and-a-half in, I'm going to attempt to call some targets in North Carolina, and I am going to pretend that I am just a man, you know, feeling that feeling, you know, because I guess you can become, what is it, gender-fluid, you know, and, and all these ridiculous. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna see if they'll let me go into their bathroom. All right. I'm just gonna call them. Say, yeah. You know, uh, I'm, I'm. I'm in the parking lot right now. Uh, I, I'm afraid to go in your bathroom because I. I don't want to be chastised. I mean, just just wait and see. All right. Well, let's see how open Target is. Moreover. All right. Let's see if these goddamn, uh, you know, even if I have to speak to a manager, I'll, I, we got to see what's going on here. Because it makes me sick. It makes me sick to say the goddamn least that we're still talking about this crap. I mean, this is the lamestream, mainstream media that is doing this. Now, I'm not going to give this any more attention until I call those damn uh, stores. But once again, folks, here we are once again with this ga damn bathroom issue. You know, Loretta Lynch coming out, to, you know, babbling her gator to, you know, whatever in the hell she's talking about in retaliation to the North Carolina lawsuit against the Department of Justice. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, let me get to the broadcast, folks, okay? Because the Trump train continues steaming forward, baby. <laughs> That's right. Let me explain something right now. Donald Trump, have you been hearing him as of late, especially in the latest speeches this weekend? I mean, he has taken aim at Hillary in echoes of things that have been said on this broadcast, baby. Do you understand that? <laughs> and that ain't no accident, baby. That ain't no accident. He went right after the, the damn uh, Hillary Clinton's jugular. 
He's not willing to brush off the woman card statement because he's absolutely accurate, folks. I mean, come on. I mean, look at all the incompetence and gaffes and corruption and all the nonsense that is linked to Hillary Rotten Clinton. And still, she has this favorable rating as it relates to voters and women in general. Had this person been a man, that would not be the case. And I agree with Donald Trump. I mean, it would absolutely not be the goddamn case. And we need to stop thinking that way. Remember, the whole idea around the supposed feminist movement is equality, all right? And we should equally be able to analyze whatever in the hell uh, is in a woman's, especially a politician woman's life, and especially it relates to her husband. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, folks, what Donald Trump is alluding to is that we, we, before you start playing the woman card, Hillary, you were mentally and emotionally abusing the women that your husband was sexually and physically abusing. All right? Went right after her goddamn jugular, for Christ's sake. And then uh, Trump had to come on the morning, uh, Sunday morning shows, you know, the Sunday morning political shows. And they asked him about that. They asked him, well, you know, is that really, you know, necessary? Or, I mean, are you going to go that low? Are you going to take the low road? And Trump was like, yeah, I'll take the low road. I mean, I, you know, she's taken the low road many times. I mean, you know, uh, you know, there, there's no kid gloves here. You know, I mean, and, and moreover, I think it was George Stephanopoulos, which, unless we forget, folks, George Stephanopoulos' boss used to be Bill Clinton, okay? So, you know, lest we forget that little pipsqueak asshole, George Stephanopoulos, whenever you see him and his bias, uh, he used to work for Bill and Hillary. Now, why he left, all right, well, you read his book. He alluded to the fact that he could no longer, you know, sit here and sweep under, uh, well, you read it, all right? But for the same reason why people kind of step down after all these sexual allegations and uh, the administration of Bill Clinton at the time is the same reason Stephanopoulos stepped down. All right, boy. And people need to understand that, and they need to, you know, get that through their thick skulls. You understand? Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, once again, Donald Trump going right after the jugular of Hillary Clinton. I love it for Christ's sake. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe, you know, the reports that I've read that the FBI may interview Hillary Rotten Clinton as early as Friday. Now, why would the FBI wanted to be, uh, you know, interviewing Hillary Rotten? Because of these emails, folks. And I'm telling you, I've alluded to this for a long time here, ever since I've come back on this broadcast, that I personally believe, in my opinion, that the uh, Clinton Foundation was nothing more, and you heard, you heard Donald Trump even this weekend call the Clinton Foundation what? A scam, baby. Huh? What did I tell you? I told you this man was going to go right after this damn uh, Clinton's jugular. I mean, give me a break. I love it, for Christ's sake, man. This man is fearless, baby. He's fearless. I'm telling you, this man has sparked the capitalist revolution. And that's why I've heeded the call, and so should you. All right, But once again, I personally believe that Hillary Rotten Clinton and Bill Clinton and the Clinton Foundation or the Clinton Global Initiative, whatever the hell it's called, all right, I personally believe that this is a scam. And take a look at all the people that have donated to this ridiculous organization, the supposed nonprofit organization. Take a look at all the people that donated to this a lot of foreign governments. A lot of people in the Middle East, yeah, a lot, a lot of these, uh, you know, nefarious Middle Eastern organizations, uh, a lot of uh, Chinese companies, so on and so forth, folks. And in my personal opinion, I believe that that's why Hillary Rotten Clinton had a private email server, so that this woman could just conveniently, through plausible deniability, just uh, throw some private uh, classified documents in those servers, in that email server, and conveniently leave it as a honeypot for hackers in relation to the governments that donated to the damn Clinton Foundation. Now, that's my personal opinion, folks, but uh, it, I think that's what Guccifer, which is the hacker from Romania, that they have really put him on a one of the fastest extraditions from a non-extraditing country to America that I've ever seen in my life. 
I'm telling you, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And Guccifer better watch his ass. He's unfortunately in, in, in the American government's custody. I wouldn't be surprised if they conveniently, you know, suicide this guy. If, you know, they find him with a freaking noose over his neck. Or one of those stories, all right, because I believe that Guccifer did know, uh, you know, that uh, about the email server. He hacked the email server. He probably knows a lot of information, probably uh, monitored the email server, probably saw different uh, Internet protocol addresses that get, went in and out of the server, so on and so forth. Things that could legitimately implicate Hillary Rotten Clinton into some freak show, nefarious, treason-esque activity. And that's why, in my personal opinion, they have extradited this son of a bitch. And let me tell you, I mean, with all due respect, Guccifer, you brought it on yourself, man. You were power tripping. You know, you at first, you started hacking these celebrities, uh, you know, uh, uh, their phones. You get their, you leak their nudes out there. Uh, you know, you started, uh, you know, he was the guy, believe it or not, that hacked the email address of the, uh, uh, of, uh, George W. Bush. Yeah, he was the guy that leaked out those re- weird-ass, uh, paintings, you know, self-portraits. I mean, what the hell is going on with George W. Bush's head, for Christ's sake? And if you haven't seen those, good God, I mean, just, you're on Google. I mean, Google them up, for Christ's sake. I mean, George W. Bush, this was out of his private email address. I mean, he was... He was sending these freak show self-portraits of himself to his family, for Christ's sake. I mean, this guy got a few screws loose or something? I mean, good God. But in my personal opinion, folks, I think that's in relation to this email uh, scandal. I think that's what the the whole scandal is about. I mean, it's not just about, oh, she had some uh, classified documents. I think that it was a honeypot for governments and other organizations that donated to the Clinton Foundation to have open season on a vulnerable, unsecured uh, server that's supposed to have highly secured information and and documents within it. And the reason Clinton that, I mean, it's a dangerous move, but she's willing to take the risk. She thinks she's a bureaucrat. You know, she thinks she's untouchable. She'll just say, hey, look, I didn't know. I was just, uh, I was using it for convenience. You know, I mean, I got to be here, I got to be there. I was Secretary of State. You know how broads are, especially a broad bureaucrat. You know, I was over here, I was over there. I mean, you know, I I went home, I went to sleep. I I wanted to be in charge. I just needed something for convenience. And I mean, just the excuse after excuse after excuse, plausible deniability is the whole reason why she did it. In my opinion. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, if you do your own investigation about this, you'll start uncovering the fact that uh, this story cooperates with my opinion. All right? So uh, that's why, folks, and I've said this time and time again, and I'll move on to another subject matter, that I believe that as days go by that it's becoming more and more of a probability that Joe Biden may usurp the nomination from Hillary Clinton. I mean, this is a really big spectacle happening right before our eyes in politics, folks. I mean, you know, we're going to talk about what's happening to the Republicans here in a second. But, uh, I mean, they're, they're, the Democrats are having their own power struggle here. And I honestly believe that uh, Joe Biden is positioning himself out here. I mean, did you see all these uh, different news reports and photo ops? I mean, it seems like you're seeing Joe Biden's face a lot more out here, huh? You know, he went out there to visit, you know, Iraq. I mean, this guy's trying to make himself look like some kind of a badass. I mean, the whole nine yards. I'm telling you, folks, I mean, you you folks on the left, you better watch your ass, because if you're a Hillary fan, of course, if you're a Bernie fan, I don't know what you're still doing. I told you, you know, y'all needed to get serious months ago, and you didn't. You just decided to go, uh, you know, disrupt the Trump train with violence and disgusting, ridiculous... Uh, agitation, and uh, now you're uh, Bernie Sanders, I mean, you're not even considering um, uh, an option anymore, so congratulations for not doing anything, and that's why you're not going to get anything, all right? You're going to get nothing and like it, Bernie Sanders supporters. But anyway, I actually believe that the probability of Joe Biden usurping the nomination usurping the nomination from Hillary Rotten is very, very high, folks. And uh, you folks on the left better keep your eye on that, folks, all right? 
Now, uh, we got a lot of news here. I want to try to cover it all. I want to take your calls. I want to, you know, get Twitter shout outs, so on and so forth. So let's just keep it moving on, all right? Now, has anybody seen the latest pictures coming out of Bill Clinton? You know, the old slick willy Bill Clinton, for Christ's sake. I mean, this guy looks like he's got the AIDS. Seriously, I mean, I'm not saying he does. I mean, he just, in my opinion, he looks like, he looks pretty bad, for Christ's sake. Now, folks, uh, within the inside circles, believe it or not, of the uh, Democrats, uh, it is being said that, uh, and of course these are rumors, but uh, you can just take those rumors and apply them to observation and, you know, conclude for yourself and conclude for your own opinion. Uh, but it is rumored within Democratic circles that Bill Clinton is sick. And it, it is, uh, you know, somewhat serious from what I have understood, uh, you know, uh, my investigations has suggested and that Bill Clinton is basically, uh, you know, keeping this sickness from the public, so is Hillary, so that they can use this as some sort of political tactic to gain sympathy uh, in, in, re- in relation to Donald Trump's attacks. I'm not kidding around, folks. So all you people that are listening in, I, I would strongly advise you, to look at the latest pictures coming out of old slick Willie Bill Clinton, all right, and take a look at how sick and gaunt this man looks. He looks pretty bad, for Christ's sake. Has you have you seen his latest stump speeches? For Christ's sake, he looks like he's losing, uh, you know, control of his attention span and his thought process. I mean, there's something seriously wrong with this man, in my opinion. And uh, the rumors are, folks, out there on the left and the Democrats, that they are, you know, basically sandbagging, for a lack of a better term, this uh, announcement of whatever is ailing Bill Clinton uh, just at the right time so that Hillary Clinton can politically capitalize, for a lack of a better term, on Bill Clinton's ailments, all right, or sickness or disease or whatever the hell it is, because he he's looks pretty bad, folks. I mean, give me a break, all right? Seriously, I mean, just take a look. You know, whatever the date is, just take a look at the latest pictures of Bill Clinton. The man looks horrible, all right, horrible. I mean, this guy is, I mean, he looks like literally, uh, you know, out of a freaking, you know, Walking Dead zombie movie. Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, once again, spread the word about that, folks, that uh, uh, don't be fooled here, all right? Don't, you know, have your damn heartstrings pulled because they are sandbagging whatever is ailing Bill Clinton in in an attempt to try to politically capitalize on it, to try to pull the heartstrings. This is political games, folks. This is political games here. So make sure that you keep that in the back of your mind when they finally come out and say that, I I don't know, whatever, he's got Ebola or something, or he's got, you know, Zika ass, or whatever the hell they come out and say that is ailing Bill Clinton, because there is something wrong with this man, all right, in my opinion, all right? I'm just saying, all right, just take a look for yourself and observe. Anyway, uh, anybody uh, hear about Roger Stone in his latest interview and, of course, Roger Stone is uh, an associate of, uh, and longtime friend and confidant of Donald Trump. Uh, he was uh, leading the campaign, uh, but basically resigned from the campaign so he can basically do more damage on the outside as an independent, as a, as a lone wolf, so to speak. And he's done a lot of damage out here in the political field, I'll tell you that. If you don't know who Roger Stone is, uh, I strongly advise you to please follow him at uh, Roger J. Stone, Jr., uh, on Twitter. That's Roger J. Stone Jr. on Twitter. Uh, this man came out in various interviews and suggested that Priebus and Paul Ryan, believe it or not, are still planning to steal the nomination. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, you see these bureaucrats? You see them? I mean, you know, they, they just cannot accept the people's will. They cannot accept the people's votes for Christ's sake. What the, what the hell? What in the blue hell is wrong with these sick, twisted bureaucrats, folks? Now, <clears throat> let me explain why this is still happening, all right? Because uh, 
uh, let's it's not con- it's not a coincidence that uh, Rince Priebus, which is the uh, head of the Republican National Committee, folks, this is the guy who's leading the party, believe it or not, Rince Priebus. If you don't know who he is, Google his stupid, goofy ass up. He's a, he's a ridiculous little twat. Uh, and uh, Paul Ryan are getting together in some sort of cabal, because let's not forget that uh, old Rince Priebus lives in Wisconsin. He's out of Kenosha, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Yeah, I got like I call all that cheese. Hey, whatever. I don't know how these stupid people out there talk for Christ's sake. Anyway, sorry if you're from Wisconsin and you're a capitalist. I'm, you know, you, 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 sorry, but uh, you know, y'all are electing some pieces of trash. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, uh, so is Paul Ryan. So you know, you've got the Wisconsin connection at the top of the Republican Party. Do you get what's going on here? I mean, you got the Wisconsin Mafia, the Cheesehead Mafia, for Christ's sake, is what we should call this cabal between, uh, well, or with uh, Paul Ryan and Rance Priebus, the Cheesehead Mafia, because literally it's the Wisconsin connection, folks, and they're going to help each other to do whatever it takes. Uh, and, and let me tell you, Paul Ryan already came out and said that he is not going to uh, endorse Donald Trump. Donald Trump has suggested that that was a pretty that was a blind side. He can't believe it, but let me tell you, I can believe it. This guy's a sleazeball scumbag. All right, I mean, he cannot he cannot put it through his stupid bureaucratic soulless mind that he is no longer relevant in politics anymore, and that he can no longer wield power because, to be honest with you, he put his whole eggs in one basket by hopping onto the Romney ticket in 2012. And to be honest with you, I couldn't believe that Romney chose this little pipsqueak as his VP. I think that's what pretty much damned him, if you want my opinion. I think that's what lost Romney the damn election. He choked. All right? I mean, he just, he just choked. There's nothing you can do about it, for Christ's sake. But once again, folks, uh, this is the Cheesehead Mafia, uh, Priebus and Paul Ryan. They are going to plan to steal the nomination. Now, believe it or not, what this is going to entail, there's a bunch of complicated issues in relation to why and what's motivating these people. Okay, Now, remember, Paul Ryan is the Speaker of the House. All right, Not to mention, he's the chairman of the convention that's going to be held this summer in Cleveland, okay? You got Rince Priebus, who's the leader of the RNC. I mean, these guys, the Wisconsin Cheesehead Mafia is in control of the Republican Party. Now, what they're trying to do is they're trying to basically exploit Donald Trump in return for their endorsement. Now, a lot of this, believe it or not, has a lot to do with, you guess what, money. That's right. You see, folks, uh, you know, Rince Priebus, he's the head of the RNC. He's the guy who organizes uh, people on the ground all over America. Because remember, the Republican Party is pretty damn big, pretty well organized, well funded, you know, so on and so forth. And what Rince Priebus wants is he wants control of the purse and how the money is basically delved out in relation to the fundraising of one Donald Trump. All right, they want control of the purse. Because remember, when you donate, uh, I mean, you know, you're going to donate to the RNC. They want control of the money. And you see Rince Priebus, he already has his buddies uh, out there on the ground, and they want, he wants them to be in control of the distribution of such allocated and collected monies uh, on the ground in local markets, all right? First and foremost, it's all about the money, all right? Seriously, it's all it is. I mean, you know, Rance Priebus w- wants to be in control of the goddamn money that is going to be generated this cycle as it relates to the Trump against Hillary Rotten Clinton, or if it's even Joe Biden, for Christ's sake. From what I understand, Joe Biden can enter the race as late as, like, July, and just kind of come in and just say, hey, I'm running, and, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not kidding around. So, I mean, whoever Trump is uh, going up against, 
Uh, I'm serious. There's going to be serious money, and this is really what comes what it comes down to at this point. I don't think it's about too much power. I think it's about money, and I also think it's about uh, sustaining their own asses in the seats that they're in within the RNC. You know, uh, Trump has a massive amount of influence in the Republican Party because he's brought millions of people that were never Republicans that are now registered as Republicans so they can vote for Donald Trump. So that makes Donald Trump in control of the party because, uh, you know, there's people that are out here that hey, he brought to the party, which far outnumber their little establishment, uh, you know, voters that Priebus and Paul Ryan and these establishment right-wingers depend on to continue to sustain their power uh, within the Republican Party. And you see, this is what Priebus and Paul Ryan don't understand. They're no longer relevant, all right? I mean, the capitalists have already taken over the goddamn GOP. You're not going to be able to blackmail Donald Trump. All right, you're not going to be in control of the purse, for Christ's sake, and let alone you are not going to be in your current positions in the party, okay? First and foremost, Paul Ryan, if you cannot back up the uh, just nominee, I mean the overwhelming nominee, for Christ's sake, I mean here in the next couple of primaries, Donald Trump is going to have more primary Republican votes than any other Republican candidate in history, all right, in history. So, you know, for you to sit back and try to say that you're not going to support Trump and you're going to think that you're going to continue to be the Speaker of the House, you should either step down right now, Paul Ryan, or, you know, these congressmen better start doing their jobs. These people that are up for re-election, uh, there's a lot of re-elections uh, happening all over the Congress and the Senate. Uh, I would start calling your congressman and your senator that is up for re-election to tell this. Well, actually, your congressman, really, not your senator. you got to call your congressman and say, look, you better start getting your buddies together out there in D.C., and you better start uh, getting a cabal of people to bring this moron down and get somebody else in as Speaker of the House that can better represent the party on the House level. And that's the same goes for the Senate, too. I mean, Mitch McConnell... Uh, it is no different than this scumbag, Paul Ryan. This is another scumbag that should be forced out of power. There should be a whole restructuring of the Republican Party, and there is going to be. All right, there is going to be. That's why these idiots are fighting to the end. Rents Priebus and Paul Ryan are fighting to the end. And I know they're going to try to steal the nomination, but I don't believe they can do it. What they're trying to do is use this as a ploy, as some kind of blackmail and it's not going to happen. All right, I'm telling you, and that's why I'm saying do not stop. If you're going to converge on Cleveland this summer uh, at the Republican convention, please continue to do so. All right, because there's going to be a bunch of Soros and David Brock paid uh, leftist agitators out there. They're going to try to make the Republican convention some kind of a madhouse. But Roger Stone has a permit so you can so we everyone can rally safely and be protected by the law Every, everybody's doing everything by the book out there and that's why i'm saying we all have to converge so that these goddamn delegates and these goddamn bureaucrats and these pieces of garbage in the rnc do not try any totalitarian tactics all right and if they do all right as i've stated folks all we're going to do all right since since we're going to be out there there's going to be a lot of us out there hopefully if they try to pull any goddamn totalitarian tactics, all right? Do you hear me? Do you hear me, Republicans? You establishment bureaucrats? You delegate jerk dicks? If you try to pull any kind of totalitarian tactics, boy, all right? My associate, Roger Stone, has the hotel itinerary of each and every one of you delegates that are going to refuse, and I'm saying refuse to oblige the people's will and what we're going to do is just try to find you wherever the hell you're at out there in Cleveland, and we're going to come up to you, and we're going to ask you a few questions. We're going to ask you a few questions. We're just going to ask you a few questions. And we want them answered immediately. 
You need to oblige the people's will. Do you understand that, boy? You all need to oblige the people's will. The capitalists took over your party. Get over it. The party is ours. It belongs to us. You bureaucrats are going to be in the unemployment line where you belong. So good riddance, you silly, sick-ass, bureaucratic pieces of trash. Jesus Christ. Give me the mic. Give me that. Give me the mic. Give me that goddamn mic. I'm just saying, folks. I'm just saying, all right? The people are coming out in the millions, and they are speaking, all right? Remember, this is still supposed to be a country where our vote is supposed to count for something, and you've got these totalitarian, bureaucratic scumbags trying to tell us it doesn't mean dick. Well, screw you, all right? This is a capitalist revolution. And let me tell you, nothing is going to stop this capitalist revolution, all right, you stupid bureaucrats? Nothing is going to stop it. You can sit here and you can try to you know, act like totalitarian bureaucratic jerk-offs, but more and more every day people are waking up to who you really are, your soulless, disgusting pieces of totalitarian trash, all right? And you need to be removed from office, removed from power, put in the unemployment line, where you put so many because of your stupid policies, you need a taste of your own goddamn medicine, you filthy, sick, disgusting bureaucrats. You need a taste of your own goddamn medicine, boy. Anyway, Jesus Christ. You see, every time I talk about bureaucrats, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I need a beer. You know, hey, engineer. Why don't you go get me a damn beer, engineer, for Christ's sake, man. I need, you know, I need something to just calm my nerves here. All right, I mean, every time I talk about these goddamn bureaucrats, it makes me sick. All right, well, go just go get it, all right? Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, every every time, every, every just every time I talk about these, these sick bureaucratic pieces of soulless trash, these totalitarians, you know, these, hey, thanks a lot, engineer. Appreciate it. Uh... Every time I talk about these pieces of trash, they make me sick. And I just, I just need something to calm my nerves, man. All right, I just, I need something to calm my goddamn nerves for Christ. Hey, thanks, engineer. I really appreciate it. All right, let me go ahead and open up this beer here. And once again, folks, uh, I'm just repeating the same, uh, you know, a drinking cycle that I did yesterday. And we did have a spontaneous show yesterday, folks. For episode number 260, if you have not heard it, it was the anti-Mother's Day edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, folks. Episode number 260, and of course you can listen to it in the archive for free at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Let me go ahead and open up this beer and we'll move on to the broadcast because there's a lot to cover today. All right? All right, let me go ahead and pour this in here. All right, now after that, uh, let me wait for that foam to foam out, for Christ's sake, and um, let me go ahead and move on with this broadcast. I didn't mean to go off any of those soliloquies, folks, but once again, uh, Priebus and Paul Ryan, the cheesehead mafia, all right, they're just trying to blackmail Trump into making sure that they are in charge of the purse, they are in charge of the money, and they also be, are going to be able to sustain their level of power, which I don't believe is going to be possible after this stupid stunt, all right? And speaking of stupid stunts, all right, did you hear about Mitt Romney, for Christ's sake? This Mormon underpants, magic underpants piece of crap. You know, let me just, oh, Jesus Christ, this guy's making me more sick as time goes by. Look, we don't want you as our president, Mitt Romney, okay? You tried to run in 2008, you couldn't even get the nomination. You got, you went in 2012, you got the nomination, you couldn't seal the deal against one of the most unpopular presidents in American history. You, you're, you're done, you're over, you're finished, magic underpants. Now get out of here. This son of a bitch is actually considering running as a third-party candidate in this nomination. 
Oh, man, I mean, can you just feel the hatred for Donald Trump and this capitalist revolution? I'm telling you, these bureaucrats are not going to go quietly in that good night, folks. That's why I, I implore each and every one of you listening within the sound of my voice. All right, you have to do your part, man, to go out and make sure that the information is spread everywhere. All right, I'm serious, and we're going to talk about the information being spread and all that sort of thing here in just one second. But, man, get a blog, all right? If, if you have a big influence in your sphere of influence in social media, I mean, make sure that people are getting these news reports. People are getting proper inf information. I mean, you understand this. I mean, we have to be the ones that are the vehicles of proper information being uh, uh, facilitated to people and make sure it's always in their face. Because remember, folks, there's a lot of ways that people obtain their information, and we need every media possible that is within our sphere of influence to do so. Because if we don't have a well-informed population, folks, they're going to continue to manipulate us as they've done throughout the years through this goddamn talking head, lamestream, mainstream media. You know, these talking heads that don't even tell you the exact news. They don't tell you what's going on. They're just suggesting ideas for you so that they can control your mind, control the narrative within your mind, control your thought processes, instead of you being in control of who you are, instead of you being in control of your destiny, instead of you being in control of your feelings, your emotions, your ideas, your philosophy. You've got these goddamn assholes on the lamestream mainstream media suggesting it to you. Like an inception. It's pathetic. All right, always remember that. Don't believe anything on the goddamn television, for Christ's sake. In this day and age of the damn Internet, you should be able to find any information, entertainment, anything that you want at your fingertips, for Christ's sake. No excuse. No goddamn excuse. And the only excuses that you idiots have for not utilizing this great tool of information called the Internet is because you're finger-banging on Facebook. You're, 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 you're shit-posting on Twitter. I mean, if you're going to be doing these activities, well, freaking spread some information, boy. Spread some popular information on Trump. I mean, I'm talking factual information, not propaganda from the left, not garbage from the lamestream mainstream media, for Christ's sake. Expose the truth about the opposition. I mean, we need you. Get off the sidelines and get on the front lines, for Christ's sake. I mean, look at this idiot Mitt Romney. This idiot is considering a third-party run. I mean, and who is uh, financing this and encouraging to do this? The same people that are financing Never Trump. All right? I'm serious. Uh, the people that are financing Never Trump, they had a meeting with uh, uh, Mitt Romney. He's considering a third party. He's going to try to siphon votes away from Trump. And why they want to do this? Because the establishment on the right wants Hillary Clinton to win. They want a leftist in power because then that sustains their pocketbooks. I mean, they can go out in the campaign trail when they have a Democrat executive. They can go out in the campaign trail and say, hey, look, uh, we need more money. I, I, I promise I'll do this and I'll do that. They raise more money when they have a damn Democrat in office than they do when they have a Republican in office. It's a money-making scheme. And that's what Donald Trump is exposing, man. He's exposing it, and they hate it. They can't stand it. I mean, that's why they're utilizing every single dirty, pathetic tactic on record, for Christ's sake. I mean, they're even inventing new ones, for Christ's sake, man. That's why, folks, if you're on the Trump train, man, please go out and spread the word. Talk to people. Do whatever it takes, man. I'm serious. Your small little micro-influence really helps on the macro scale, all right? I'm serious. This is not a joke. We need your help, all right? And that's all there is to it. I mean, freaking Mitt Romney, third-party candidate, for Christ's sake. I mean, look at the hatred from these bureaucrats. It's sick. Anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on Mitt Romney, folks, because I think that there's something a little bit more near and dear to our hearts, especially if you're listening to my voice on the Internet. And I'm talking about these D.C. regulators. I don't know if you heard what they said today. All right? They said that the new media, 
which is you, which is me, which is everybody that's on the Internet that is spreading around information that we're becoming too much, too influential in America. Oh, yeah, the FCC. And, and look, I told you, well, I, I didn't tell you, but when the FCC started taking control of the damn Internet, folks, I knew it was going to be goddamn trouble. You know, and, and they're starting to incrementally show that right now, folks. All right. Making these statements, these D.C. regulators saying that the new media, the Internet influencers, you know, people that, uh, you know, have a lot of people in their sphere of influence in their social media accounts and uh, people like myself who have a show or uh, video producers, whatever the case might be, they're saying we're a little too influential out here and we need to limit their online speech. We need to limit their online free speech. I mean, how many times are they going to do this? All right, I remember the last time that they tried to do this, and I was on the the air. Do y'all remember that? I mean, there are still digital artifacts all over the internet in relation to the campaign against SOPA. SOPA! I mean, seriously, the true capitalist army got together. It's one of the most I mean, let me tell you, I was very, very pleased when not only did we implement our anti-SOPA campaign, but we had part in taking down that last attempt at controlling the Internet. That's, I mean, literally, do you remember that? I mean, it was one of the most happiest days on the Internet that I had when I heard that SOPA was being struck down, for Christ's sake, man. And look, that's what the power of the Internet can do. The power of the Internet can, can basically shape the consciousness of mass groups of people. And that's why even your small influence, even if you think it's small, it, it makes a big difference as a whole, folks, believe it or not. So I'm telling you, what's a waste of time is going out and, you know, finger-banging on uh, social media and accomplishing nothing. What isn't a waste of time is uh, gathering news, gathering information, enhancing your knowledge, learning something new every day, and not to mention spread uh, proper information to other people via this tool called the Internet, man. Seriously, I mean, even if it's as simple as retweeting something, even if it's as simple as going out and tweeting out an article about something, I mean, somebody's going to read it. I mean, it's out there. You put it out there. Somebody's going to read it. Somebody that wasn't exposed to that particular piece of information will be exposed to it because you put it out there. And you see, we need that kind of spread of information. I mean, that's why these damn regulators in Washington want to regulate the Internet. And I'm telling you, we cannot have any regulation on the Internet. Any. I'm serious. There should be no regulation of the Internet because what regulation will lead to is monopolization of the Internet, folks. All right? I mean, who is going to influence the regulators? Well, look who's the big Internet people on the scene out here. Who are the big social media sites? Who are the big search engines? Who are the big e-commerce sites? These are the people that are going to monopolize the Internet, utilizing these goddamn government institutions. That's why I always said, folks, a monopoly cannot exist without government assistance, without government coercion. All right, because literally when the government merges with corporations, the government is forcing this monopoly upon you. They are forcing it by law in many cases, in most cases, actually. They are forcing it on you, and this is what the regulators in Washington want. All right, it has nothing to do with free speech. Obviously, it has something to do with us being a little influential. I mean, they hate the fact that they can't control the narrative any longer. You understand what I'm saying? They can't keep secrets anymore. You know, these politicians, they can't go out, they can't do their cocaine and, do you know, visit their prostitutes. You know, they can't go out and, uh, you know, can't molest kids anymore. I mean, I mean, just look at Dennis Hastert, the former Speaker of the House in the 90s and uh, during 9-11, for Christ's sake. This bastard, this supposed conservative bastard, right? 
This man had molested children when he was a high school wrestling coach. What was it, in the freaking 60s or something? Early 60s, late 50s? I don't know. A long, long time ago, okay? Whatever the hell it was, I don't know the exact date, all right? And from what I've read, this man paid these boys hush money, all right? And, and moreover, not only did he pay him hush money, he was able to suppress this information for all these years until he finally, he's an old fart, uh, you know, about to croak, for Christ's sake, and now it comes out that this guy was a goddamn pedophile, and, and now it, it doesn't really matter anymore, does it? No one's, no one's caring. You understand? And you see, that is an example of controlling the narrative. You see, that's what the damn establishment bureaucrats loved about being establishment bureaucrats. They could control the narrative through these talking heads that are the supposed free, lamestream, mainstream media. This is a state-run media. It always has been, folks. You people need to understand, whatever you hear on the damn boob tube is purely just nothing more than propaganda for the state. All right, that's all there is to it. So that's why you've got these D.C. regulators, FCC, calling for regulation on the Internet, all right? Calling for regulation on the Internet, and we cannot have regulation on this Internet. We can't, folks, because then all of a sudden information becomes illegal, and information should never be illegal. And that's the beautiful part about this Internet. You can find any information that one seeks, even if it's controversial, even if it's deemed uh, you know, radical or extreme or whatever the case might be. One has the freedom to do so. I mean, the ability to acquire knowledge via the Internet is invaluable. And for these regulators, these FCC bastards to come in and suggest that they're just going to come in and say, oh, we're going to regulate the Internet now. Screw you, bastards, all right? You're already regulating our free speech in our regular everyday goddamn lives. In our reality, all right, you stupid damn coercive governments. You people are basically oppressing our free speech in reality, for Christ's sake. And now you want to come online? You want to bully us around, for Christ's sake? You want to limit our speech online? What a joke. What, what a pathetic joke, for Christ's sake. Let me tell you, everybody on the Internet should eyeball what's happening here with this talk in D.C. about regulators suggesting that, quote, new media is too influential, and they want to go ahead and try to seek to limit free speech. Like I said, shows like myself and uh, others on the Internet, for Christ's sake, man. And that's another beautiful part about the Internet. That's what I loved about the Internet. If you can't find content that informs you or entertains you on this Internet, well, by God, you've got the tools to create it your damn self. All right? Seriously, if you can't find the content, if you can't find the information, if you can't find the entertainment that's of your liking, well, then, by God, you can utilize this tool of the Internet and create it yourself. Hence, the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. All right, I'm telling you, I listen to my broadcast all the time, for Christ's sake, because, look, I enjoy what I do because, I mean, I, I like the way it's delivered. I like doing it, for Christ's sake. All right? I'm entertained listening at times to this broadcast, for Christ's sake, man, because I don't hear nothing. I don't hear truth. I don't hear information mixed with a little bit of entertainment slapped upside your slap nut chin. I'm serious, folks. This is how powerful the Internet is. And I'm telling you, the, the FCC and these regulators in Wall Street, they're just doing the bidding of those that donated to the bureaucracy, that donated to the campaigns. Uh, you know, the people that are monopolized, excuse me, monopolizing the Internet, these are the people that are pushing for this regulation. And we need to stop it kicking and screaming. Do you understand that? We need to stop it kicking and screaming. So don't just sit there and play with your pecker shaft and, and, you know, and play with Rosie Palms and her five sisters, for Christ's sake. Go out there and do something about it, for Christ's sake. All right, get off the sidelines and get on the front lines, you lazy bastard. Jesus Christ, what is it going to take? Huh? What is it going to take before you realize, oh, Jesus Christ, I don't, 
I don't have uh, my freedoms anymore. I don't have the life that I used to love. I don't have the life that I used to live anymore because the goddamn government took it the hell away. Stupid morons. But I'm telling you, what gives me optimism is all the millions of people that never participated in the political process now participating in it. I mean, they're becoming very aware. I mean, if you take a look at the Trump train and the diversity of different people, different cultures, different races, I mean, it's beautiful, for Christ's sake. Man, millions of people are coming together because we are tired of the establishment. We are tired of the political class. We are tired of these useless bureaucrats. We're tired of it, and we want it to basically be dismantled. And that's what Donald Trump represents, folks. He's going to start dismantling bureaucracy out here, and I love it, baby. I love it. I cannot wait. It'll be, and I said it, and I'll say it again. It'll be a great day, a great goddamn day in American history when you see these bureaucrats on the unemployment line, uh, you know, pissing and moaning and crying. You know, I strongly believe that when you start, un- you know, when you start losing jobs on the bureaucratic level, when when Trump starts cutting these bureaucratic jobs, these bureaucrats are going to start being the ones pulling off the mass shootings, in my personal opinion. You know, the, where do you think the whole terminology going postal comes from? You know, the Postal Service is a bureaucratic system. Do you understand this? It's, it's funded by the government. Now, why would somebody go postal, huh? I mean, you know, if they get fired from, from a bureaucratic job, I mean, you know, that's why the freaking Postal Service hemorrhages money by the billions, even though everybody mails a damn uh, letter and packages, I mean, we're, we're in the midst of one of the biggest e-commerce uh, uh, years in, in, in history at this point in time, and uh, yet they're losing money in the billions. Why? Because they have this ridiculous bureaucratic pay scale. They have this ridiculous bureaucratic pension system. And everybody that is a taxpayer, including those of us that are mailing goddamn packages and mail through these sons of bitches, are paying for it. I mean, every year that you're a postal worker, you're going to get a raise. Every year you're going to get sick days and vacation days. Every year you're going to – I mean, just, just, just the same bureaucratic nonsense, all right? And a lot of the times, I mean, because, you know, let's be honest, postal workers – uh, you know, you don't have to be the most, uh, you know, sharpest knife in the drawer. To be honest with you, I don't really like the post office in general. I think they're a bunch of jerk-offs, lazy, bureaucratic pricks. And if you work for the post office, you know, screw you is what I like to say to you people. Go screw yourself. I hope a dog bites you right in the freaking crotch. All right? And let me explain why. Now, I don't mean to get off on a tirade about freaking post office people. But let me tell you, every time I've got to go mail something as it relates to going to one of these goddamn post office outlets, you've got nothing but a bunch of bureaucrats taking their sweet-ass time and acting as if they have some level of authority over you because, uh, you know, they're the ones taking your goddamn mail. And, and I, it just, it just, they're just rude, disgusting, doing the least amount of work possible for the most amount of money. Every one of you people in the in the post office, in my personal opinion, should be fired. It's a nepotistic, disgusting, idiotic system, and, and you know, you, you people are hemorrhaging money out of our goddamn tax system when you're collecting money. So let me tell you something. Uh, you know, when Trump comes into office, you better believe you know there's going to be some going postal idiots as it relates to the chopping of that and the chopping of a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, if you think that, you know, right-wing nut jobs are crazy, you just wait until these damn bureaucrats lose their job. They're going to go freaking nuts, all right, because they're idiots. I mean, they're going to have to go back to the unemployment line, and they've got to be held accountable for being absolute nothings, you know, uh, in the employment market, and they're going to realize that nobody wants to hire their idiot, absent-minded, freaking non-coherent asses. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let me go ahead and take a swig of this beer here, man. I'm just, I mean, it's been foamed out here for a little bit. I've been getting on this tirade about, about a bunch of stuff here. It's important. There's a lot of news coming on out here, and everybody really needs to be informed. Let me take a swig of this. Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Today, Bridget Griffin shared a video of her daily yoga routine, two self-help articles, and her new blog called Build Your Inner Bridge with Bridge. 
girl, your sharing is turned into oversharing. No worries, Bridge. Geico has some info worth sharing with your seven blog followers, like how you could save money on your car insurance, update your policy, and report a claim just by visiting geico.com. How's that for building your inner bridge? Bridge, Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Ah. Good stuff, good stuff. Anyway, folks, uh, let's go ahead and get some Twitter shout-outs going on since we're already in the second hour of the True Capitalist Radio Show. I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and once again, I want to thank you for tuning in with me. If you haven't already done so, folks, please follow me on Twitter, all right? Politics Ghost, all one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. And, of course, folks, each and every one of my live broadcast, because we are broadcasting live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, you can look at every broadcast that I've ever done since 2008, all right? And, you, and that's located at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, all right? blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to take some Twitter shout-outs from folks that are listening in online and all you got to do is retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. And, of course, I already said the Twitter account, Politics Ghost. Uh, the first tweet, not the pinned tweet, uh, but the first tweet on the Twitter account that says, True Capitalist Radio Now Live. True Capitalist Radio Now Live. And I'm going to go ahead and get – do we have any Twitter shout-outs, by the way, Engineer? Uh, he says we got a couple here, so let's go ahead and get to them right now. All right, we've got the the, the Brony Network in the house. How, how quaint. How's it going? Uh, the Berg, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five. Uh, Z Frost Creations, the Great Trixie. Oh, Jesus, got French doors. Uh, who else do we got? Sergeant Yoda in the house, a concerned man, Cappy Coley in the place. Uh, who else? Uh, two Tohu, True Tohu Radio. Shove it up your ass. Uh, we've got Razor 360 in the house. Strope Waffle in the place. Uh, Fart Lungs. Uh, Jesus Christ. Torzier in the house. AJ Styles 1987 in the place. Uh, we've got uh, Lucas in the house. What's going on, Lucas? We've got uh, Liquid Swartz. Liquid Swartz in the house. Uh, we've got pro-fascist Nazi. Oh, Jesus Christ. Come on, man. Give me a break. Uh, we've got, uh, Mr. Captain Falcon, uh, Dark Emperor 6 botch specialist. All right, and once again, if you want a Twitter shout-out, all you have to do is retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. Politics Ghost is the name. All right, and, uh, True Capitalist Radio Now Live is the tweet that should be retweeted, folks, if you want a shout-out right here on the True Capitalist Radio Show. Who else do we got here? We got Exara Hawks, the True Capitalist Penis. Uh, we've got Midget, Go- Midget Ghost. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, why do you idiots consider me either a cripple or a midget, for Christ's sake? I'm not a midget, all right? I feel bad for midgets because, I mean, literally, you know, their arms are like literally a foot shorter than being able to hold their own penis when they're at a urinal. And not to mention, when they're at a urinal, they got to stand tall, sometimes tippy-toe, too. So, I mean, Jesus Christ, you know? Feel bad for those sons of bitches. Anyway, I, enough about the midget talk. Uh, human play, human protoplasm, uh, how quaint, uh, based Lowler in the house, emperor reptile in the place, uh, La Happy Visitor, okay, uh, I'm, Jesus Christ, some of, the, some of these names are just completely ridiculous. Some of you trolls, I mean, how do you people even have a soul, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ, look, Marky Gosler, for Christ's sake, like Marky Piler, for Christ's sake. Look, I told you, scumbags, don't reference me in the same sentence, in the same breath, in the same tweet, in the same social media post, in the same anything as those fruit bowl YouTube little stars out there, right? Jesus Christ, they are a poster child for the fruit bowl of America. The absolute pussification. The absolute and utter pussification of the American male. That's a goddamn poster child of it. Jesus Christ. Texas swim team. Here we go with the goddamn jokes about... Look, 
I'm telling you, we have had way too much rain out here in Texas. I've told this time and time again, hey, Harp, stop it. Stop it, for Christ's sake. And I bet you some idiot in the harp over there, you know, a four-eyed, freckle-faced, you know, pimple-faced geek is probably going to, you know, come back at me with a, oh, but you don't understand, it's the age of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, Aquarius. Anyway, uh, uh, do we have any more Twitter shout-outs, Engineer, for Christ's sake? All right, we got a couple more here, then we're going to move on to uh, other parts of the broadcast, folks, all right? Green Leader, 1978. Uh, we got regular TCA in the house. What's going on? Uh, we've got uh, the Canadian Spartan. What's going on? Uh, we got Artron Havoc in the house. Uh, midget on, oh, Midget on Wheels. There you go. I, I, I was just waiting. I was waiting for you asshole trolls for saying, yeah. Jesus Christ. You, you. Look at Canada in Fuego. That's horrible, asshole. Seriously, that's just disgusting. That's disgusting, all right? You got taco capitalists in the house. Uh, we've got H- Hikari uh, 1138, Archangel, Kiwi Archangel in the place. What's going on? Uh, capitalist UK in the house. What's going on, man? Hey, RIP London. You can now consider London, London stand, and we're going to talk about that later on in the broadcast. Uh, anyway, I, I think I'm done with Twitter shout-outs, folks, because, I mean, we got so much goddamn garbage to talk about, all right? we got so much goddamn garbage to talk about that we got to get to it right now. Now, before we got into Twitter shout-outs, uh, we were talking about how the FCC and regulators in D.C. want to limit Online speech because the, quote, new media has become too influential. Too influential. Can you believe that? No, that's because we're giving out all the information to people, and they're opening their minds. Jesus Christ. And now they want to suppress our free speech again. So keep your eye out for this, folks. All right? We have to defend our own free speech online, folks. We have to do it. If not, these regulators are going to come in, and they're going to take our Internet freedom. And then what are you going to do? Uh, then you have to go outside in real life. Uh, oh, oh, God forbid you assholes have to do that again. And let me tell you, the leftists have made society outside your house into goddamn ridiculous ghetto fight shitbag America. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, uh, once again, all right, please. Keep your eye on this crap. We cannot have any regulation on the damn Internet. None. They're already limiting our speech in real life. They cannot, and I repeat, they cannot regulate our speech and limit our free speech on this Internet. This is the last frontier of free speech, free information. We cannot let them do it. Do you hear me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? We can't let them do it. We can't let them do it. So anyway, now that I've gotten that out of the way, folks, let me take another goddamn swig of beer here. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Just like my old man used to drink. Anyway, uh, let's just continue on this theme, shall we? Did you all hear that former Facebook employees are admitting that they suppressed right-wing and conservative news and posts, huh? Oh, isn't that a shock? I mean, of course they do, for Christ's sake. I mean, if you didn't know that, you're a damn fool. I mean, you got Mark Zuckerberg over here. Uh, I'm sure if, uh, you know, uh, Barack Obama had a colonoscopy here at his latest physical, they'd find Mark Zuckerberg's head, for Christ's sake, all right? So let me explain something to you. It's no coincidence why Facebook is suppressing people of the right-wing political persuasion, all right? I mean, they want to be the monopoly. Do you understand that? They, they're the ones that want to be the monopoly of the Internet. So who's going to make them the monopoly? They're merging. You understand? They're merging with government. That's why he's got his head shoved so far up Obama's ass, for Christ's sake, uh, they they could see the last condom that uh, Michelle Obama used uh, on uh, Barack Obama in 1983. 
or 87, wherever the hell they, these stupid people met. I'm serious, man. So once again, I, I just don't understand why people are shocked at this crap. Why do you think I don't have a Facebook I mean, have you read their terms of service? They own your freaking likeness on there. They own your images. They own every freaking post. They own everything. You know what I'm saying? You, you people put your whole life on there. I don't, I, never, I don't understand that. I don't get that. I don't understand. I mean, it just has everything to do with attention whoring and this false self-esteem that they've been selling in school for the past 30-something years. This hyping of self-esteem that everybody needs a pat on the ass for every stupid little thing that you do. I mean, you know what get, you know what makes me sick is that everybody is taking pictures of everything and posting it on this crap like we care, you know? Hey, look, 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 uh, look at what I ate today. You know, I mean, who cares what you ate, for Christ's sake? I hope you choke on it, you stupid, self-absorbed son of a bitch. I mean, you know, these people, oh, look, I'm off today. I'm sitting here, and I'm drinking beer. I mean, nobody cares, all right? Nobody cares what you're doing. Nobody cares if you're with your grandma. Nobody cares, all right? Now, now don't get me wrong. If you have a private uh, Facebook and you're just doing this amongst your families, I mean, I would even question that, folks, because I think Facebook is a scumbag company, and I would advise you to use another networking mechanism or another – interacting mechanism to communicate with your family, for Christ's sake, because, I mean, this is, I, I mean just look at the scumbagness of their operation. They're slimy. Uh, they're disgusting. I mean, it's just, uh, I just don't like Facebook, all right? And now f Facebook former employees are finally coming out and saying, hey, we suppressed uh, right-wing and conservative news. We suppressed con right-wing and conservative posts that were really liked, so on and so forth. We did it. All right, that's all there is to it. We're leftist uh, propaganda wing for the government once again, and this just proves more and more that there's a reason why they want to regulate the Internet. You don't think that Mark Zuckerberg has his wife, uh, what the hell is her name, cream of some young whore, or whatever the hell her, his wife's name is? You don't think that he has this broad tickle in his asshole with a feather with butter in his ass? thinking that he can merge with government and that he can monopolize the goddamn Internet, the whole concept of social media? I'm serious, man. I mean, we wet dreams about at night, for Christ's sake. I mean, look at his slimy little face, man. He gets off on it, for Christ's sake, man. He wants to be the totalitarian of your information. He wants to be the totalitarian of your information. And you people are giving it to him, man. You're not even selling it to him. That's the bad part about it. You're not even getting anything for it, man. Jesus Christ. I mean, wake up. Wake up, for Christ's sake, man. Jesus Christ. I'm serious. I don't like Facebook, man. I barely like Twitter, to be honest with you. But, I mean, you know, the reason I like Twitter is because, look, there's not too much that you can post on Twitter. I mean, you, you just it's 140 characters, a little less if you post a picture, and it's like, oh, great, you know, who cares? You know, we don't have to hear this long soliloquy, this novel. I mean, have you seen it on Facebook? Oh, I was, I was feeling bad today. So what I did is I went to my mom's house, and, and she was with a boyfriend, and I heard her fucking. So I decided, oh, my God, I'm so depressed because I'm not fucking. So I went to the adult store, and I got myself a garter belt, and I thought, oh, I'm sexy, why don't I, I just shut up, shut up, shut your mouth, no one cares, no one cares about your pathetically anal life, no one cares, attention whores, I know that's devastating to you people, I know that it's hard for you people to fathom, but no one cares about your pathetically anal life, no one cares, all right, every time somebody puts a Facebook like, they're like, yeah, well, I gotta act like I care, right? So let me let me just push a like button. How hard is that? It's just a freaking click. Or they throw these subtle jabs. You know, have you have you have you seen these subtle jabs, these subtle shots on Facebook? You know what I mean? They're these subliminal shots that they pretend to be like a positive statement, but you know, in the back of that particular statement, it was meant like as a jab, as an insult for Christ's sake. I mean, that's that's basically uh, Facebook right there. You know, 
Like, I mean, you know, when a fatty posts, uh, you know, some kind of picture of herself, like, oh, man, look, I'm feeling sexy tonight. And you got all her skinny friends saying, oh, you go, girl. Oh, you look sexy, girl. I mean, you know, these are the same broads. If you look at their profiles, you know, they got, like, you know, bodies that look like Vita Guerra in, like, you know, the early 2000s or something. All right? And they're telling this fatty, oh, you you go, girl. You can have anybody you want. Look at you. I mean, that is just a shot to the mouth. All right? It's just, it's just a shot to the mouth to the fatty. Somebody should just tell this fatty, like, look, we get it. You, you know, and yeah, of course, you can base, you know, what people eat on what kind of fat they are. You know, she's a tub of shit looking fat. This broad is, you know, hogging Dawson it. Uh, you know, bread eating, bread basket. You know, well, what do, you, what do you think they call like the stomach? You know, when they got fat in the stomach, they call it the bread basket because that's where the bread goes. All right. You know where the cheese goes? It goes in the ass and the legs. You understand? Well, they got big thunder thighs and asses. That's cheese. They love they love eating cheese like rats. Now, if they're just bulky, now if you got just like a bulky chick, like she's kind of you know not not necessarily fat, but she's big and bulky. You know, she's eating a lot of steak. You know, eating a lot of protein, a lot of beef. You understand what I'm saying? Now, what these fatties need to understand, and look, I hate to go on the soliloquy, but I, I just think that fatty women need to get off their high horse, all right? Look, woman, all right, just because some black guy, uh, you know, 15 minutes before last call comes up to you because, you know, he's literally went up to every goddamn woman in the site and uh, everybody's rejected him, and he goes up to you to last call giving you that shucking and jiving, doesn't mean that anybody else wants you, all right? This man, that's his meal ticket, all right? I understand that, right, ladies? I mean, I'm not hating on my my brothers over there. My brother's from another mother. I'm not hating on you guys for that. I mean, you know, you're getting in where you fit in, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know, half of you guys got like eight, nine, ten children apiece. So I, I don't blame you if you're trying to use a fatty and say, you know, all I got to do is talk to a baby. You know what I'm saying? All I got to do is just go up, man, like I gotta walk up with a limp, baby, and just be like, hey, baby, look what I got over here, baby. I got some hogging dolls, baby. I got some cookies and cream, baby. Come on over to my house, baby. And all this other crap. I get it, all right? But you ladies need to understand that these are the same fatties. Once, you know, uh, these, uh, and it doesn't always have to be black gentlemen, all right? It could be. Could be anybody who's desperate that, you know, needs to squeeze one out, uses a fatty, and then never calls them again. These fatties utilize those situations that they put themselves in as a means to hate men, as a means to be so dramatic and so, uh, you know, attention whorish, for Christ's sake. And I'm just saying, you know, for you fatties out there, you have to come to a realization, Okay. What makes you happier in life, all right? If eating freaking, you know, cheese and bread and overeating on sugary goods is what makes you happy, well, then, you know, stop thinking that you're going to get, uh, you know, uh, uh, go- who's the guy, Gosselin? That, that's who's the, the guy who's uh, the, the real popular, uh, you know, buff idiot. The, the broad, that, that he's with that Mexican, uh, Ryan Gosselin. Right, Ryan got like, oh, I'm fat, but, you know, I'm I'm confident in myself, and I believe that I can get Ryan Gosling. No, you can't, fatty, all right? No, you can't. You know, you know when you can possibly can do it? If you become a capitalist, all right, and don't have any children, first of all, fatty, all right? You don't have any children, you become a major capitalist, and you're making lots of money, then you can buy Ryan Gosling, all right? And you continue to be a fatty, hog and Dawson it all you want, all right? Or you've got to do what the other skanks are doing, which are exercising every day, not eating a goddamn thing, spending all kinds of money on makeup and hair did and you know, clothing and, uh, you know, all, all the imagery that it relates to looking as like a hot or what is deemed a hot woman. That's the only way you're going to get it, ladies, all right? So I'm just sorry. I didn't mean to get off on that soliloquy. I'm just stating I'm sick and tired of these uh, ladies that are out here. They're being followed by, like, 500 guys on Facebook telling a poor fatty, you know, shooting herself with, uh, you know, something that's, like, 12 times too small as a selfie, uh, telling these uh, fatties, oh, you go, girl. You can get anybody you want. Oh, you're going to knock them dead. I mean, that is just such condescending, insulting crap. 
All right, and I feel bad for for some of these fatties. They got to put up with that. I kind of feel bad for them, but you know, then again, I don't because they need to learn better. They need to learn something. But I think that they like the drama. They like the oh, poor me. I'm a victim. <laughs> I got screwed, and I didn't know. It. Shut up. Shut your stupid face. Either put the fucking fork down, or get some damn plastic surgery. Get on a goddamn treadmill and burn some of that goddamn trim off your fat ass. Jesus Christ. Anyway, that's enough. I didn't mean to get off on that tirade. I'm just, we're talking about Facebook here, and it's ridiculous. I mean, just scouring and lurking on Facebook is just, it's pathetic. You know, I mean, you start feeling sorry for people, all right? You start feeling sorry for the, like, I mean, you, like, hey, man, I'm having a barbecue. Look at this. They, they, they show the barbecue. It's nothing but chicken. I mean, there's nothing wrong with chicken, but, you know, I interpret uh, a, a freaking whole goddamn uh, barbecue grill full of chicken as that, oh, you couldn't afford any kind of brisket or beef, huh? You're you know, a cheap bastard, huh? huh? Obama, too, getting to you, boy. I mean, people can read who you are based upon these posts. I'm telling you, right? I'm serious. I mean, you know, chicken is like, you know, especially the freaking thighs and legs at the grocery stores, like 99 cents a pound, for Christ's sake. All right. I mean, I'm sick of seeing, you know, people, hey, I'm having a barbecue. Look at this, man. And it's freaking chicken. All right. Look, chicken is cheap. All right. You're not impressing anybody by showing your goddamn stupid chicken on a grill for Christ. You'd be impressing people if you had freaking T-bone steaks, you know, mixed with some goddamn, uh, you know, baby back ribs. Uh, mixed with some goddamn, uh, you know, uh, some some expensive high grade sausage, uh, you know, I mean, some some really high grade beef for Christ's sake. Uh, I mean, uh, then you maybe impress somebody, you know, some goddamn uh, lobster tail. But no, you people, I'm telling you, you just look on Facebook, work on it, all right, and take a look at the majority of these goddamn barbecues that these people are so fucking proud of. Excuse my French, all right. Hey, I'm barbecuing today. Like it is, it's nothing but chicken. Jesus Christ, man! Hey, what do you want? Kudos for this? Yay! You're freaking grilling chicken because you don't have enough money to buy beef. I mean, great. Jesus Christ, and I hope that you idiots that are listening to this. I hope that you become self-conscious about, well, Jesus Christ, maybe I shouldn't, you know, take pictures of my food. Yeah, you shouldn't, because I make economic judgment calls on these people. I make ed- economic judgment calls when I see them, you know, take a picture of their stupid meal, for Christ's sake, and it's freaking, you know, a cheap piece of crap, or, you know, it, it, it's low-grade beef. Or, I mean, I make economic judgment calls. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, you're attention whoring on this cheap food? I mean, Jesus Christ, this looks, I mean, I can, I can still see the goddamn uh, marks from where the goddamn jockey was hitting the son of a bitch. I mean, you want, you want props for this? Anyway, uh, let me move on, folks, because there's so much freaking news, and i got to get on the radio graffiti. I didn't mean to get on this tirade about Facebook, but I don't like Facebook. I'll never have a Facebook, folks, all right? At the most, I'll have this and any other decent social media site that I feel that is worth uh, my presence, all right? Seriously. All right, and that's why I like Blog Talk Radio. They let me do what I do, and I can do it. It's very easy, and, uh, you know, I got a decent relationship with these people. They still believe in uh, free speech, and and that's why I'm here. So anyway, uh, let's move on, folks, all right? Uh, Facebook employees admit, once again, suppressing right-wing and conservative news. Now, did you hear Dave Cameron, this son of a bitch? I mean, this guy's going loco. He's going full-out bureaucratic international lunacy. This guy said that if the Brits, my fellow brethren from Britannia, if they pass the Brexit, that they're risking going into World War III. I mean, Jesus Christ, can you believe this scumbag? I mean, this guy is pulling the World War III card to Britannia in relation to the Brexit, for Christ's sake. I mean, do you see the desperation of these bureaucrats? They're desperate. They are selling out their own country in hopes of getting a seat at the bureaucratic international institutional table. 
That's what they're doing, folks. That's what Angela Merkel's doing. That's what the, the people in Belgium are doing, the bureaucrats in Belgium, the bureaucrats in the Netherlands, the bureaucrats in France. That's what people that are part of the European Union are doing. They're selling out their own people in hopes of getting a goddamn chair at the table of international bureaucracy. What did I tell you about this leftist crap all the time? That is the basis of liberals. That's the basis of leftism. The basis of it is continue to move up and up a bureaucratic hierarchy. All right, seriously, that is it. And I think people need to understand that, that if you're a Democrat, if you're on the left, anybody who you vote for, you are voting for the same thing that is happening to Europe. You're voting for the same damn thing that's happening to Europe. And let me tell you, blood will be on your hands, boy. If we have any kind of goddamn Democrat elected as president, moreover, the Republicans, that's why Donald Trump's election is so important, because the capitalists have taken control of the Republican Party, and we need to eliminate the international bureaucratic riffraff that's within the Republican Party. And, of course, that means Priebus, that means Paul Ryan, that means Mitch McConnell, everybody who has pushed forth ideas and legislation and law that was pro-international institution, need to be removed from office. They need to be removed from any kind of party power. They need to be removed, period. All right? Because we no longer need representatives of the American people selling out the American people so that the people that are selling us out on the national level hope they get a chair at the seat of the international bureaucracy table. That's all this is about, folks. These bureaucrats are soulless. And look, Dave Cameron is a perfect example of that. He's threatening World War III over here if the people vote. Can you believe that? He's threatening the people's vote. He is trying to influence the election by utilizing the World War III card to scare people to not to vote for the Brexit, for Christ's sake. Look, once again, Britannia... You have been through a lot, all right? You have done the, the impossible sometimes in history, all right? You were an island, okay? And uh, I alluded to this uh, a couple of shows ago about how Christopher Columbus was funded by the Spaniards. He came over here, found the New World. Conquistadors came over here, conquered the Indians. Now, what did the Conquistadors take from the Indians? Lots and lots of gold. That's right. And let me tell you uh, what Spain did is they brought that gold, or the conquistadors brought it to Spain, and they flooded back then during the time of uh, the conquistadors and the, you know the finding of the New World and so on and so forth. They flooded Europe with gold. At some point, gold was kind of meaningless. At some point, and it was Britannia and the Dutch and these uh, navigators within these uh, within these countries that basically founded the fact that it's not just about how much gold you have. It's about the exchange of goods and services and providing natural resources and goods to markets on a global scale. And let me tell you, uh, that is what Britannia uh, represents, in my personal opinion. I mean, Britannia was a small island, and it was a queen, that basically uh, funded the voyage into the New World, and it was that funding, the London Tea Company, that started the, uh, the domination of Britannia and the entire world at the time. All right, So that's why I'm saying, Britannia, you've come a long way, and then for, you know, you've got these leftists. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I feel bad for Britannia. They're on every level. I mean, you know, this goddamn closet, you know, leftist, international, bureaucratic asshole, Dave Cameron, is really selling everybody out here, man. I mean, he's just coming out full throttle, you know, international, soulless bureaucrat. I mean, what a piece of trash. Horrible that this man would threaten his own country that, you know, they risk World War III if they pass the Brexit vote. It's pathetic. He should be ashamed of himself. And anybody who's still supporting Dave Cameron at this point, I mean, good God, what the hell's wrong with you? What the hell's going on with this guy, first of all, man? This idiot actually believes that he's going to get himself a seat at the goddamn international bureaucratic table. What a piece of crap. Give me a break. 
Anyway, folks, uh, I mean, I, let's just continue on with the bad news from Britannia since we're on the subject matter. All right. I told you, folks, you know, I was probably one of the few to announce, you know, at least on the uh, audio media, that uh, Sadiq Khan was going to be elected as the London mayor. I had a lot of people from Britannia and London and Britain that didn't want to believe it. You know, they were like, no, Ghost, you're wrong. The, the, the vote hasn't been counted yet. It, uh, they're still counting votes. I mean, it, it hasn't been officially announced. Hey, I knew it was going to be official when they started saying that to America before – when they started announcing the winner in America before they announced it to the actual country of origin, you knew the fix was in, baby. All right, come on. And let me tell you something. I, I When I said uh, that Sadiq Khan – was going to be the London mayor. This is the first Muslim London mayor in history, the history of Britannia. And, of course, he belongs to the Labour Party, folks, which is a leftist uh, party of England. Uh, I told uh, everybody when I first heard the announcement of this man being mayor that uh, it's going to be now known as London Stan, and RIP to London and let me tell you, if London goes, I mean, that's all. That's it for Britannia. I mean, I think London is Britannia. It's the heart of Britannia. I mean, it's the financial circuit of the world, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, if London goes, that's it for Britannia. So once again, folks, uh, RIP to London. Uh, here comes the new London stand, for Christ's sake. And it wasn't but one day. It wasn't but one day after this son of a bitch was elected that all of a sudden the historic red buses, you know those red Brit buses, you know the double-deckers, one day after he's elected president, or uh, excuse me, elected mayor, excuse me, of, of London, they have advertisements on the side of the historic London Britain buses that say glory to Allah. In uh, I don't know whatever writing it is. I mean, it's it's in some Arabic language or something of that nature. Yeah, glory to Allah. What did I tell you, people? Huh? London is now London stand for Christ's sake, folks. And it's not a coincidence. I mean, the influence of the vote came from all the immigrants that were allowed to migrate to London. I mean, why do you think Trudeau was elected in Canada? Trudeau was elected in Canada by the amount of margin, uh, and you take a look at the amount of margin that uh, he won by, that was the same amount of immigrants that were allowed to come into the country of Canada from the Middle East and, you know, these other foreign nations, for Christ's sake. So I've been saying this for years, that these leftists are playing immigration games so that they can sustain their bureaucratic power for long periods of time. That's the whole objective. I mean, that's why Sadiq Khan got elected. He got elected because the massive amounts of immigrants, and as I've stated, folks, uh, London and England embraced these immigrants with open arms and love and socialism and so on and so forth. And what did these uh, Muslims do? They, they've radicalized the whole goddamn place, for Christ's sake. I mean, do a YouTube search about London uh, Muslims. I mean, just take a look at all the, uh, all the lunacy that's happening in relation to London and, and, and the Islamic situation, man. It's looking a lot like what you're seeing in Germany, but a little less violent. All right? I mean, it's looking a lot like what's happening in uh, – uh, France, you know, a little less violent. But let me tell you, with the passing of this, uh, or the, the election of this mayor in London, I, I wouldn't be surprised if freaked out garbage starts happening within Britannia. And I feel bad for my brethren across the pond. I'm sorry. All right, I am sorry that you, you guys have been outnumbered by immigrants, and now they are now affecting your political system. Why do you think Barack Obama and these leftists want to bring in these immigrants, folks? They want to sustain power for long periods of time. Get that through your damn head, you morons. I mean, now not only do they have a London mayor, all right, in London stand now, the iconic red double-decker buses are advertised glory to Allah along the side of them. Huh? Oh, isn't that great, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. 
makes me sick. It makes me sick. And let me tell you something. I have always had a connection uh, with, uh, you know, it used to be the uh, Libyan rebel faction that was fighting against Muammar Gaddafi. Well, they have now turned into ISIS, all right? Well, they turned into al-Qaeda, and then they merged with ISIS. It's a long story. These jihadists, you know, they're just uh, they're, they're set trippers, uh, if we want to uh, use gangster terminology. They're set tripping, all right? But anyway, uh, we've got Mahmoud, folks, and let me tell you, it's been, it's been a long time. We've, I mean, we, got, we had him one time here about a few weeks ago. We've got him again here. Mahmoud is going to do, you know, have a few words to say. And look, he's been on point, you know, Mahmoud. I mean, you know, if you listen back, Jesus Christ, in 2010, I believe, when we started interviewing this guy on a random basis, I mean, he predicted all this stuff. He predicted that, uh, you know, uh, they were going to implement Sharia law, and Sharia law was going to be implemented all over the world. And, I mean, look at what happened. All right? I mean, Mahmoud, I mean, he knows what he's talking about, I guess, for Christ's sake. So, hey, hey engineer, do you got Mahmoud on the horn there? <laughs> All right, folks. Well, uh, without any further ado, uh, Mahmoud, are you there, sir? Mahmoud? That is right. I am Mahmoud, and I am a part of ISIS. I told all your Americans that Barack Obama was going to implement Sharia law. And look at what's happened. Look at what has happened. We have taken down Gaddafi. We have taken down Mubarak. We have taken down everybody that has been a secular leader, and we will continue to do so. So what I want you all to do, all you filthy Americans, I want you to get down on your knees right now. I want you to stop what you're doing, and I want you to get down on your knees. And I want you to face Mecca. You face Mecca now. Do you understand? You get down on your knees. You right now and you face Mecca. You face Mecca now. I told all you filthy Americans that you needed to keep paying your taxes. And I told you when you repaired your taxes that Barack Obama was going to use those taxes to arm our brothers that are committing jihad. And that's exactly what he is doing. So you feed the Americans, you shut your face, and you keep paying taxes. Get down on your knees right now, and you face Mecca. You face Mecca now. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. The holy, holy, the holy, 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 I told you, I told all you this was going to happen. And it is just the beginning. So you'll feed the Americans. You keep getting fat. You'll keep watching Kardashian. You keep doing what you're doing. And the jihad will continue. Wallah Rakba. Wallah Rakba. Wallah Rakba. All right, get this city. Now. Get him off the, get him off the goddamn air. Get him off. Jesus Christ, scary, isn't it? I mean, Jesus Christ, this guy was accurate the whole damn time. Freaking Mahmoud, he's laughing. He's laughing at us, for Christ's sake. Do you hear him? He's laughing. Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, folks, he said it. He, he said it. Anyway, we're running out of time here. Let me get to the last two subject matters, all right? Uh, Iran tests a, a missile that can reach Israel. Oh, how quaint. You know, they're already testing the limits of the goddamn supposed uh, uh, agreement that this scumbag social worker president of ours supposedly agreed. It was supposed to be some big leap in diplomacy, for Christ's sake. Now you've got Iran testing a damn missile that can reach Israel. That's just great. Let's, I mean, these idiots are going to spark World War III. It's disgusting. Oh, Jesus Christ. Thanks a lot, Obama, you piece of trash. Get this guy out of office already, man. I'm serious. I mean, I, I mean, I'm tired of this guy. I'm ready for a Trump presidency already. I'm ready for Donald Trump. Jesus Christ. And as I've stated, folks, 
I was advocating that the United States do something in relation to the 2009 Iranian Revolution. You can look back at the archive at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. You can look back at that archive. I was advocating this, all right? I was advocating that we should do something in relation to this goddamn uh, Iranian Revolution of 2009. We needed to help them. We needed to aid them, for Christ's sake. They wanted to take down the Ayatollah. They wanted to take down Ahmadinejad, who was the damn president at the time. And you know what Barack Obama did? He did absolutely nothing. You know what the international community did? Absolutely nothing. But when it came to aiding al-Qaeda to bring back, bring down Muammar Gaddafi in Libya, when it came to aiding the Muslim Brotherhood to take down Mubarak in goddamn uh, Egypt, look at what Obama's done, huh? Look at this. huh? He's aided the Muslim Brotherhood, for Christ's sake. You know that in Egypt, folks, <laughs> that they have charged Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton in the, in the country of Egypt for aiding their enemy, for aiding the enemy of their state, they can never go to Egypt again. Seriously. All right, they know what they did. Seriously, I mean, I told you about that whole situation in Egypt, but the Egyptian people finally know what was well, what happened to them. They get they got hoodwinked, and because our government was in bed, literally in bed, because look at the roots of Huma Abedin and and where and her bloodline goes into the goddamn Muslim Brotherhood. She's literally in bed. You know, because it's been publicized, this this woman shares hotel rooms with Hillary Rotten Clinton, and they're in there for hours at a time, and I doubt that they're sitting there watching Oprah. All right, I'm I'm telling you right now, they are in bed with these Islamic extremists. It's disgusting. These leftists, I don't get why these leftists and these Islamic extremists have gotten together. It's just one of the warped, the most warped goddamn uh, marriages in history. But I think that the, the weak-ass leftist liberals are utilizing the jihadists as muscle. You know, you remember that stupid social justice warrior professor? Hey, I need some muscle over here. Come on, guys, I need some muscle. I mean, they're too pussy to do anything themselves, for Christ's sake. That's why you got people like Merkel. That's why you got people like Obama bringing in these goddamn sleeper cells to try to suppress the people. It's pathetic, and not to mention to sustain their own power. It's pathetic. Anyway, last but not least, did you hear North Korea? North Korea has bolstered Kim Jong-un's title to chairman, for Christ. They keep boosting his own fat self, for Christ. Get the hell out of here. I'm sick of hearing news coming out of this stupid pissing ground of a country, for Christ's sake. All right? Seriously, I mean, just look at this idiot's, you know, impulsive, ridiculous actions. He's powerless, for Christ's sake, man. He's literally, these stupid rockets that he's throwing up are nothing more than all the gunpowder that he was able to scrape up at whatever freaking firecracker factory he has in goddamn North Korea, put in some makeshift rocket, throw it up there to try to prove that, oh, look, I got the rocket. I ain't going, I ain't going, I got a rocket. You ain't got crap but cheese in your fat ass, Kim Jong-un. Keep eating, fatty. Keep eating. I mean, this guy is not stopped growing. Have you seen the chin on this son of a bitch? I mean, the trunk on this son of a bitch can barely fit into a collar of a goddamn suit. He was he literally was photographed in a suit in this latest, uh, you know, assembly of the goddamn uh, whatever proletariat government, or excuse me, the communist government that he has. I mean, the trunk can barely fit in the goddamn collar of the damn suit shirt. Fat cheese eating son of a bitch. I, I, Jesus Christ, I mean, what a stupid scumbag, for Christ's sake, Kim Jong-un. You, you stupid, dumb, ungrateful piece of trash. Anyway, uh, I mean, once again, now I guess he's going to try to call himself Chairman Kim. Is that, is that it now? Is that what he's going to try to do? He's going to try to bite off Chairman Mao? I, I am Chairman Kim, or, or is, it, is it Chairman Un? Chairman Jong? Chairman, Chairman Kim? You know, I mean, well, it's like a bitch that got married, for Christ's sake. I mean, does uh, does she uh, uh, keep her maiden name? Does she take the last name? Does she take the maiden name and and, and put it with the last name? Does she take the maiden name and, 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 and put, put a hyphen in it and then take the last name? Should she spell the hyphen? I mean, it's just stupid. It's pathetic. 
Anyway, folks, ah, I'm done for Christ's sake. I mean, it's you know, I'm telling you, I mean, the world is getting more and more burdensome because these bureaucrats are making it that way. So keep your goddamn eyes out, folks. All right. I mean, there's a lot of news coming out, and I'm telling you, folks, keep your goddamn eyes out. Anyway, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to what everybody has been waiting for, and I'm talking about Radio Graffiti! <laughs> That's right, folks. Radio Graffiti, the part of the broadcast where the spectators become a part of the spectacle. All you have to do is give me a call at 516-453-9903. And when I call on your area code or on your Skype name, you have exactly three to four seconds to say or do whatever the hell you want to do or say. All I ask is you not be a goddamn Helen Keller deaf mute jerk dick, all right, and just not say a goddamn thing. And before we get to our first caller, folks, please spread the show around like wildfire. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost is the website. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And, of course, follow me on Twitter, folks. The Twitter name to follow, Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost. Anyway, folks, let's go ahead and get to Radio Graffiti right now. All right, we're taking it from the top, 848 Radio Graffiti. Trump 2016, baby. Trump, Trump 2016 is right. Trump 2016, baby. It's all day. Trump train, baby. Full steam ahead. You can't stop us. 520 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, uh, why do you hate baby boomers so much if you're one yourself? Well, first of all, I hate baby boomers because uh, they are going to go out and leave you young people with absolutely nothing. You are in serfdom. I mean, they are imploding the political, social, and economic systems, and you people do not have the tools necessary to comprehend how royally you're getting screwed. And I can't just watch and sit by and pretend it's not happening, all right? I mean, I got a soul, scumbags. You understand that? I got a soul! 205, Radio Graffiti. You want some? Oh, Jesus Christ, take the phone out of your ass, crack. Uh, 831 Radio Graffiti. Hi, folks. Jimmy Deep Frog here. Is it true that the real reason you have Templeton in your office is so that you could tell your so called friends that you got a bitch in the crib? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, you know, Templeton is a boy dog, you stupid idiot. And secondly, leave my goddamn dog alone! Freaking Kermit the Frog, for Christ's sake. Can somebody step on this idiot, for Christ's sake, already? I'm, t- I'm tired of hearing him. All right? He's he's mad because Miss Piggy is, you know, sitting on Gonzo's nose, and she couldn't believe how... Yeah, never mind. Jesus Christ. Smells like freaking ham at their house. 808 Radio Graffiti. I began my sentence in the fortress of Landsberg on the left, April 1, 1924, resulting from my sentence handed down from the Munich People's Court. For the first time in my years of uninterrupted party work, I was finally able to begin a job that many had asked me to complete, and one which I myself... I mean, what is this? I mean, I, you know, this is like the second or third time that I've heard this clip. What is this anti-Semitic little girl here that, I mean, that you keep playing? What is this crap? 808 Radio Graffiti. Aloha, ghost. Why don't you come to White Lua and see my little pony? Oh, Jesus Christ, sick-ass fruit bowl. Uh, we got Stinky Dinky, Radio Graffiti. I'm Ghost Baby Bunt. I heard you had a piss fetish. Stop making this video. Oh, uh, Jesus Christ, not that Eric Buttstalker. No, not today. No, we're not starting this again, asshole, all right? You're not starting this again. Go to another show and call somebody else, all right, you fruit bowl? Take about ten steps away from my freaking butt crack, you goddamn internet butt stalker. Good God! Jesus Christ. Uh, Critical Sands, Radio Graffiti. Ghost Lurk Jones, got watching anime. Ghost Lurk Jones, why don't you start me? I like putting. Jewish people oh. in my- uh, all right, that, look, first of all, don't call me Ghostler, all right, first of all. And secondly, enough of the remixes. All right, I mean, if you do a YouTube search uh, and take a look at how many remixes are out here, for Christ's sake, it's unfreaking believable, man. It's, it's, it's enough. 
That's enough. Let me tell you, I am warning each and every one of you people that are making these splices, that are making these remixes of me, all right, two words, baby, two words, punitive damages, all right? That's all I'm saying. All right, we're going to the calls here, uh, 952 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, you know, Ghost, I've been listening to your show lately, and i got to say, I really don't appreciate your views on cisgender. Because let me tell you something, okay? I'm a lesbian, and if I want to go into the men's bathroom, well, that's my right. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I was supposed to call a target, for Christ's sake. Let me go ahead and do that right now. All right, let me go ahead and do that right now. I forgot all about that. This, this little gender this little gender idiot, uh, this little troll here, reminded me of that. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, hey, Engineer, can you give me a target in, like, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, I guess North Carolina. How about that? Can you give me a, a, a target at North Carolina? Come on and raise up. Take your shirt off. Spin it around your head like a helicopter. Well, give me the number, all right? All right, I got the number. Four eight, right? All right. Now, what I'm going to do, folks, is since you had Loretta Lynch at the beginning of the broadcast started trending on Twitter as it relates to uh, this North Carolina bathroom lawsuit that is being thrown by the state of North Carolina against the Department of Justice, uh, Loretta Lynch came out and said, oh, we can't discriminate against people, and meh, meh, meh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a target who is favorable to letting anybody and everybody uh, go into their bathroom. I'm calling a target in North Carolina and see if they'll let me go into their bathroom. So go ahead and call them, engineer. Hi. Thanks for calling the Raleigh Central Target Store. Our normal store business hours are Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. It's located at the northwest corner of Six Forks Road and I-440. Right, store main menu. For the pharmacy or to refill a prescription, press 1. The clinic, press 2. Electronics, press 3. The photo lab, press 4. To speak to the store operator, press 0. Or please wait. All right. Please I hold you while your that. call is transferred. All right. All right. Me... Thanks, calling Target of Hills. Can I be find something? Hi, ma'am. Uh, I am going to be patronizing your store today, and I just wanted to make sure. I'm feeling like a woman today, so I'm going to be dressing like a woman. Is it okay for me to go ahead and just go into one of your bathrooms that is a woman if I happen to relieve myself? Yes, is that, that's your choice. Okay. I still I still have a uh, my beard, but I will be wearing a wig. That is fine. Okay, well, I really appreciate it. I'm really glad that you guys are open to this stuff, and, uh, you know, uh, thank you. P power to the tranny. Have a nice evening. Thank you. I mean, did you hear that? I mean, I, I said I was going to be wearing a dress. Did you all hear that? Did you all hear what is happening in Targets, for Christ's sake? Oh, my God. Good God. Good God. Oh, my God. You see that, folks? Do you see that right there? That is Obama's modern-day America, for Christ's sake. I need to take a swig of beer after that crap. Did you all hear that? No wonder North Carolina is filing a goddamn lawsuit against the stupid-ass Department of Justice, for Christ's sake. The corrupt Department of Justice. The same Department of Justice that ran uh, Fast and the Furious, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, let me take a swig of that. i got to take a chug of this beer after that. Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Today, Bridget Griffin shared a video of her daily yoga routine, two self-help articles, and her new blog called Build Your Inner Bridge with Bridge. Girl, your sharing is turned into oversharing. No worries, Bridge. Geico has some info worth sharing with your seven blog followers, like how you could save money on your car insurance, update your policy, and report a claim just by visiting geico.com. How's that for building your inner bridge? Bridge, Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 
So once again, I called a damn target in North Carolina. North Carolina! And they said that it's perfectly okay. I said, I feel like a girl today. And I said, I mean, you heard that. You all heard that. This is the new America, folks. I hope you're enjoying it. Anyway, back to radio graffiti, shall we? Jesus Christ. Uh, Mar- Michael Carlino, Radio Graffiti. Hey, what's going on, Ghost? Hey, I just wanted to say, hey, anybody who sits there and says that uh, Roger Stone is a fucking stand-up guy is out of their fucking mind. That guy is a... Hey, hey, no, wait a minute. Don't be slandering the name of Roger Stone, baby, all right? Roger Stone is actually a very close associate of mine. Don't talk trash about that man, all right? Do not talk trash about Roger Stone. Anyway, we got Mr. Sev, Radio Graffiti. Welcome, one and all, to the True Capitalist Circus. I am your announcer and head honcho, Mr. Sev, bringing you many spectacles tonight, including the midget with a big temper and even bigger waist, the ham bone they call ghost. All right, shove it up your stupid ass, all right? Nobody cares, all right? Nobody gives a crap. Homer Zuckerman, Radio Graffiti. I'm I'm actually glad that you played that uh, little Charlotte's Web piece of Templeton the Rat enjoying the smorgasbord, 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 because that's why I named Templeton Templeton, believe it or not. Uh, 716, Radio Graffiti. I feel like a girl today. 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 No, shove it up your ass. I just said that. No more of those freaky internet butt stalkerish trolls, and not to mention no more internet butt stalker. Right? Please, good God. Jesus Christ! Do you hear this crap? Do you hear this? Anyway, eight three one radio graffiti. Meet me in Sesame Street in 10 minutes if you're looking for an ass whooping you crippled midget. Oh, shut up, Kermit, goddammit. Shut up, I'll boil you under a goddamn magnifying glass, you stupid French frog. Uh, Bill, 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 Radio Graffiti. Not that Eric butt stalker, no! Not that Eric butt stalker, no! Not that Eric butt stalker! God damn, do you hear this crap? I just freaking said that! I just freaking... I just freaking said that! God. Jesus Christ, man! I mean, I just freaking said that, man, and they remixed it already? I just freaking said that! Good God, man! I mean, this is radio graffiti. This is radio graffiti, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, give me the mic. Give me the, give me the mic. All right, Jesus Christ, give me the goddamn mic. Oh, shit. I mean, Jesus, I mean, I just said that. I just freaking said that just like 15 seconds ago. I just freaking said that. I just freaking said that. Jesus Christ, 484 Radio Graffiti. Jesus Christ, you're taking too long. Jesus Christ, Radio Graffiti. My cat, however, will have the starring role in my new instructional cooking video called Eating Pussy, a guide to preparing feline meat. Let me show you a clip from the... Oh, Jesus Christ, that's disgusting. You filthy pieces of garbage. And in the wizard, Radio Graffiti. I think my sister's cute. What? I think my sister's cute. She's got a pretty good smile. I dream about kissing her lips. And mom says no, no, no. But oops, I did it anyway. I kiss my sister on the lips. I kiss, kiss, kiss my sister on the lips. I kiss my Jesus Christ, with these sick, perverted, goddamn songs, for Christ's sake. I mean, good God. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ. 435, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, I think you sound like you're bald. Uh, Well, I'm not bald, boy. I know that's probably going to make you feel like, oh, he's not bald. I'm not, boy. Uh, A real black guy, Radio Graffiti. I am a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Shut up. 
throw it up your ass, all right? Piece of crap. I'm telling you, splicers make me sick. You make me sick. Teutonic Plague, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, what's going on? How are those folks in the Steam chat room going to hate on me if I give them a shout-out? Shout-out to the folks in the chat room, and you know what? They called me an emperor tier troll. Thank you for the compliment. And I think Karaskin was sad yesterday because I bought him out. I bought Karaskin out. I am the new Karaskburgers, so bow down, trolls. You just sit over them. Oh, he's right. <laughs> you hear the Teutonic Plague here? Good God, here, 781 Radio Graffiti. Ghost, I'm in Austin right now. The place is a giant slip and slide. What the fuck, dude? Yeah, uh, enough, all right? Don't don't make fun of us. We have too much rain, I know it, for Christ's sake, all right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, we are about out of time of the live broadcast, but if you want to listen to the broadcast, the uh, post-show edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show, you need to call in at 516 uh, 9903 to be able to listen uh, and uh, listen into the post show edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. All right, folks? All right, that's all you got to do. Give me a call and you'll be able to listen to it. We're going to take a little bit of radio graffiti. And the reason we do this, folks, we've got a lot of podcast listeners and we want to give them a little treat since they can't attend the live show with us. We're live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. BlogTalkRadio.com slash ghost is the website. BlogTalkRadio.com slash ghost. And by God, folks, follow me on Twitter. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost. I will be here tomorrow, same place, same time, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Spread it around like wildfire and let everybody know that I'm in the place and I'm in the house, baby. Spread it around. All right? Spread it around for Christ's sake, man. Don't be a lazy prick. Anyway, long live the capitalist army, baby. I'm out of here. <laughs> All right. We are now in the third post-show edition hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course... I am your host, the man they call Ghost, folks, and uh, once again, I want to thank you for tuning in with me. Uh, I, I don't know if we're going to take too many radio graffiti calls. What I've found, folks, is that uh, a lot of people that are tuning in uh, to the post-show edition on the phone, they necessarily don't want to partake in radio graffiti. They want to hear in, uh, the post-show commentary, so to speak, but we'll go ahead and take a radio, couple of radio graffiti calls right now. All right, uh, we got 786 Radio Graffiti. Hey, trolls, let's get Ghost's ball trending. <laughs> Woo! Uh, shut up, shut up. Stupid, silly bastard. Uh, Renegade Supreme, Radio Graffiti. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. This is getting, this is really getting creepy, guys. Seriously, this is really getting goddamn freaking creepy for Christ's sake. I mean, seriously, this is getting creepy. This is getting creepy for Christ's sake. I mean, good God. Let me get some more beer for Christ's sake. More beer, Christ's sake. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get another beer here. Got one right here. Let's go ahead and open it. There we go. Let's go ahead and pour it in here. That's what I'm talking about, man. I'm going to tell you, let that foam out here, and we're going to go ahead and take some more calls. You know what I'm going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a couple more callers, and then I'm going to have the classic cluster call, which I'm going to call on a bunch of different numbers. Y'all are all going to be on the line at the same time, and go ahead and say whatever the hell you want to say, all right? As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and do that right now. All right, now this is what we're going to do. We're just going to call on random numbers, and you can just start saying, all right, Dark Sword, you're on the air. Uh, 941, you're on the air. Uh, uh, 574, seven, you're on the air. Uh, 732, you're on the air. Uh, uh, Typhoon Fruit Dragon, you're on the air.
Everybody, my name is Markiplier. I love Templeton. I love Templeton. Oh, Meat in my mouth. Are you kidding me? Don't get that Markiplier crap off my goddamn. Get off my fucking line. Get off my line, you piece of crap. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, let, let, let's, uh, we're going to add a couple of more here. How about 518? You're on the air. 518 is on the air. Over the way, Temple Oh, you out. I really, uh, really want to say so everything about it. I love it. Let me say all over me. Oh, <laughs>
Oh, Jesus Christ, this guy's uh, he's not he's not saying anything. Seven three two radio graffiti. I'm just gonna hack your butt crack. Glory to Allah. Glory to Allah. Glory oh Jesus to- Christ, man! I mean, who are these people? Who are these internet butt stalking ass internet butt stalking people? Who are these people? Mike three four seven radio graffiti. On every one of you goddamn capitalists out there that think you're so goddamn proud of yourself that you accomplished so much in life, I spill you. Tua, I spill you. Shove it up your ass. Are you kidding me, boy? Everybody who's a capitalist, who's a taxpayer, who's a worker throughout the world gets my utmost respect. Do you understand that? They deserve the pat on the back, boy. What are you talking about? Anyway, we got 781 Radio Graffiti. The unraped truth. There's never been a funny rape joke, just like there's never been a funny joke about terrorism, racism, sexism, ageism, or even rapism. We may not be able to stop rape. But oh, Jesus Christ, for Christ's sake. Brony drumming, radio graffiti. Block Talk Radio presents the same guy who needs a hover round down the stairs. Spoiler alert, he is bald. Shut your face, all right? I'm not a goddamn cripple, and that's all there is to it, for Christ's sake. He has one opportunity to take down the bureaucrats and social justice warriors that are corrupting this world, and throw cans at trolls, otakus, and bronies that are splicing and remixing him. You stupid piece of... (laughs) True Communist Radio. Dawn of wheelchairs. Shove it up your ass, you stupid imbeciles, man. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, look at all the energy and effort that's being taken to to, to besmirch my integrity, all right? I mean, I'm a capitalist, and I deserve the respect accorded that title, boy. Jesus Christ. El Foxo Loco, Radio Graffiti. In all, 24 Americans went to the moon. But it took an unseen army. Yeah, Jesus Christ, you just went off. Are you trying to suggest that, oh, uh, the, the moon landing was real, for Christ's sake? Look, I've seen the pictures, all right? Nothing but Nevada, all right? I've seen it. I, I don't believe one thing NASA puts out whatsoever. I don't believe them. The biggest scam in world history. Anyway, uh, 239 Radio Graffiti. Well, how do you know there are ghosts? Mickey Mouse. Hey, I just got off the phone with Bob Iger, and he said, with all the hail and water going on down there in Texas, we can open up another blizzard beach. That's another capital, from one capital to another. I want to see what you think. Shut up. Shut up, Mickey Mouse. All right, first and foremost, don't be making fun of the Texas floods out here, all right? This is not a joke. I mean, I haven't seen so much hail in my life. All right, I don't know what the hell's going on out here, and for you goddamn trolls to be making fun of it, you should be bitch slapped in your mouth. Stupid, silly bastards. All right, let's get another cluster call going on in here. How about that? That was kind of fun, right? Uh, let's see who we got here. Uh, we're we're going to take it from the bottom. This is just a cluster call. Uh, we've got 510, we got 508, we got 404. Uh, you're all on the air, all right? 928, you're on the air. I'm going to find uh, We're, uh, 703 is on the air. Okay. Where is this, Tony? Oh, God, I'm on the air. <laughs> 360 is on the air. Da, 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 Uh, people, man. Yeah. Yeah, Are you all listening to this? I mean, good God! 
We need Princess Celestia to help us. Open the portal to Equestria. <laughs> cluster call here uh once again uh i'm telling you this is the kind of people that are on the internet all right folks this is what i gotta deal with out here all right but before i get into anything else i want to implore everybody once again to do whatever it takes to make sure that the trump train keeps steaming full steam ahead folks you understand that we are the new media all right? We are the new media. You, me, we all are the new media. Whether it's retweeting some information, whether it's tweeting some uh, news article, uh, whether it's creating a meme in some political fashion, social fashion, whether it's producing a video, we need for each and everybody that's on the Internet that has the energy, time, and effort to do so to – Churn out some information, some news, some propaganda, whatever it takes, folks, so that these people that are in the general American public can be put in their faces, the proper information necessary so that they can understand the seriousness of Donald Trump's candidacy. It is America's last line in the sand. It's our last line in the sand. So, man, please, if you are within the sound of my voice, all right, make a meme at least. I mean, we need some work going against Paul Ryan right now, all right? I mean, his uh, opponent, Paul Neyland, is gaining on Paul Ryan in the polls out there in Wisconsin. And as I've stated, I think it was in the previous broadcast, I'm calling on all the capitalist army, everybody on the Trump train, We need to do whatever it takes to make sure that we inform those that are in Wisconsin and elsewhere in the Republican uh, electorate that this man is running against Paul Nealon. He's running against Paul Ryan in his district, and he needs to be elected. All right, we need to not only remove Paul Ryan from the goddamn Speaker of the House and as the chairman of the the, the, the freaking Republican convention, we need to also remove this man from office. So he has to go out in the real world and work, for Christ's sake. But you know what? He won't have to because he married Jana. He married Jenny, married into money, for Christ's sake. That's how, he, that's how come he was able to buy that mansion that was designed and, and built by the Parker Penn founder. Oh, isn't that great? I mean, Jesus Christ. Anyway, as I've stated, folks, we need as many people as we possibly can in the Trump train. I mean, you're on the Internet, man. Do something. Do something. I mean, start a blog. I mean, if you have any influence in social media, push out news articles. All right? Persuade everybody you know to vote for Trump, for Christ's sake. That's how the capitalists were able to take control of the party. These damn bureaucrats and the damn Republicans could not say no to the people's will. We came out in overwhelming numbers, millions of numbers, and that's why these bureaucrats cannot sit here and do any kind of totalitarian tactics. Now, I'm not putting it past them that they won't, but they're not going to be as blatant about it, folks, because we were out there, the Trump train was out there pushing full steam ahead, making sure that everybody out there understood the facts, understood the information, and understood that Donald Trump was not your traditional, bureaucratic, soulless asshole that is going to sell out the country. This man is 
pure American first, as it's dictated in his foreign policy. This man is providing a revolution for the capitalist. And I'm telling you this right now, this is a capitalist revolution. All right, we're going to take control of this government. We already took control of the freaking Republican Party. We are going to take control of this government. And when we do, we are going to lead the country into prosperity. And everybody's going to have a job. Everybody's going to have economic opportunity. And it's going to be a great time. No more leftists, no more socialism, no more communism, none of this crap anymore. We've already applied these models to America. It doesn't work. It's almost bankrupted us. It has socially corrupted us. It has politically corrupted us. This leftism does not work. It doesn't work. It's already been proven. Look at the product. Look at society right now. Look at the political system, for Christ's sake. Look at the economic system. It does not work. So that's why I'm telling you, folks, you are the new media. Why do you think the FCC wants to crack down on Internet free speech? Because you have more of an influence than the lamestream mainstream media that's talking on the damn boob tube. You and your influence within your social media circles. You within your influence within your social circles in real life. You within your influence of content creation, of journalism. I'm telling you, folks, we are the new media. This is the capitalist revolution. It is our time now, folks, and we cannot let these bureaucrats try to take away our rights, especially when it comes to free speech on the Internet. This is serious business. That's why I am suggesting everybody keep their eye on these D.C. regulators who are suggesting that the new media is, quote, too influential. Too influential. You want to know why we're too influential, folks? Because just like the story 1984, truth has become patriotic. Can you believe that? The truth, the truth has become patriotic. I mean, isn't that a shame? The truth. People don't want to hear the truth, folks. I mean, if you have told people any kind of truth, that is going to warp their perception that they've held on to for a long period of time, they'd rather believe the lie than to accept the truth. And as I've stated and quoted Adolf Hitler before, he was the one that said, the bigger the lie, the more people will believe it. And I'm telling you, folks, these people would rather believe lies and warp perspectives and perceptions than to actually understand and have an adult relationship with the goddamn truth. And I think that's our biggest problem in America today, folks. I think that's our biggest problem. We don't have people that want to not only tell the truth, but accept the truth as reality. Nobody wants to live in reality. Everybody wants to live in this false hollywood incepted perception. I mean, women want to live as though they're living in a goddamn romantic comedy. Men want to go out and live like each and every one of them, even though they're slovenly and ugly and fat and disgusting and poor. They all believe that they're big papa, and they can go out and get any broad they want. I mean, that's just not how it works. You need to deal in reality, folks. You need to deal with realism, and that's what this show represents. It's trying to slap you upside your fat, jelly asses with some realism. Trying to slap you upside your fat, jelly ass faces with some reality. Why do you think they want to push this so-called reality TV through the boob tube? They're trying to accept an interpretation of reality so that you can interpret it as reality. When it, folks, is not reality. It is a pre-produced show. It is a pre-produced product. Reality TV. That's how they are mind-warping you people. Seriously. That's how they're mind-warping you people, and you people need to get a grasp of your consciousness. You need to be coherent at all times. You need to be observant. You need to open your mind, for Christ's sake, and you need to be always at the wheel of your mind, because if you're not at the wheel and you're out there in la-la land, well, guess who's going to control you, folks? The bureaucrats. And that's what they've done to this country thus far. That's why the country is in the situation that it's in. 
And that's why I'm telling you it's so important that Donald Trump gets elected president. This is a capitalist revolution, damn it! This is our country now. It belongs to us. And we're going to take it. You understand that? We're going to take it. We're going to take it away from the bureaucrats. We're going to take it away from these filthy, disgusting, soulless, bureaucratic pieces of trash who have basically took the wheel of the ship that is the country, drove it into an iceberg, and as the goddamn ship is taking on water, they have the American populace in third class trapped in gates and crap, telling them it's okay, here, have some cake. It ain't going to work that way anymore, folks. It ain't going to work that way anymore, and that's why I am glad I'm a part of this, and you should be glad you're a part of it, too. By God, I'm going to keep saying this. Get off the sidelines and get on the front lines, for Christ's sake, man. Spread the information. Spread the word. Do your part, you lazy prick. Even if it's as little as as spreading the word about this show. I mean, I'm telling you, people have told me through a variety of different mediums that when they listen to this show, it's entertaining and whatnot, but they start thinking. It starts sparking synapses in brains, for Christ's sake. Whether they agree or disagree with some of the things, everything, or a lot of the things I say, it sparks thinking, and that's the point. This is what that should be done on college campuses on a consistent basis, but it isn't. Instead, you got safe spaces and, you know, all this fluffy, stupid, dumb, you know, stroke your goddamn ego, self-esteem nonsense that is filled with college campuses. You see, this show, it sparks synapses. It makes people think a little bit. So anyway, folks, it's just, even if it's as little as just spreading the word about the show, please, man, all right? All right, I'm not out here like some of these hosts trying to sell you something every goddamn 20 minutes, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to discredit those hosts, you know, like, hey, you got to, you know, buy my filters and buy this. I'm not, I'm not doing that, all right? All I'm asking you to do, if you enjoy the show, you appreciate the content, just spread it around, baby. Let everybody know that we exist on this Internet, for Christ's sake. Go to the blogs. Go to the forum posts. Go to the social media sites. Let everybody know, for Christ's sake, man. I'm serious. I mean, this is free content. This is free information. You know, this is free entertainment, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, you don't get nothing for free anymore. Yeah, sure, you got to hear, you got to see some ad advertising, for Christ's sake. That's a small price to pay as opposed to a monthly charge. Always remember that, folks. That's a small price to pay as opposed to a monthly charge. Anyway, folks, uh, I'm getting the hell out of here. I want to thank you for tuning in with me. Once again, folks, please spread the word about the show. That's all I'm asking you to do. I'm not asking you to buy any products. I'm not, asking, I'm not plugging anything to you or anything of that nature. Just please spread the word about the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost is the website. That's Radio dot com slash ghost and of course folks if you haven't already done so please follow me on twitter the twitter name to follow is politics ghost all one word no underscores politics ghost is the name to follow on twitter baby all one word no underscores now once again folks i will be back online live 4 p.m central standard time tomorrow let everybody know that I'm going to be live, for Christ's sake, all right? I mean, this is serious business. It's very important. We need to have people listening in, having synapses spark, for Christ's sake, whatever it takes, all right? This is a capitalist revolution, and we need for you to do your part, baby. Get off the sidelines, get on the front lines, and start helping us, for Christ's sake. Spread the word, spread information, spread news articles. Make sure that the Trump train is full steam ahead all the way to the damn White House. So the capitalists t- can take control of this country and make the goddamn country great again. Anyway, folks, once again, tomorrow, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, tell everybody you know, your, your friends, your family, your mommy, your granny, your daddy, your grandfather, your brother, your sister, everybody. Anyway, I am out of here, folks. Once again, follow me on Twitter. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. Long live the capitalist army, and death to feminism, death to communism and socialism, and death, death, death to totalitarianism. I'm out of here, boy.
That isn't just the sound of the all-new 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLC being put through its paces. It's the sound of innovation. The innovation behind one of the most advanced SUVs on the road today. With multiple driving modes, a suite of intelligent drive systems, and a technology-filled cabin that sets new standards in modern luxury. This is what innovation sounds like. Now, discover what it feels like in a 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLC. Some equipment described as optional.